microphone check. One, two, one, two, three, four.
And good afternoon from downtown Buffalo. We are at Buffalo Riverworks, where we are set for outdoor hockey in the upstate New York Collegiate Hockey League. It is the Fredonia Blue Devils set to take on the Niagara Purple Eagles. Good afternoon. My name is Aaron Elprin, alongside Brian Thompson, live from the 412 Communications broadcast booth. 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions. About set to go here, Ryan, for puck drop between Fredonia and Niagara. And even though it's not quite the same unique experience that it maybe was 20 years ago, there's still something about outdoor hockey, isn't there? It just it, it makes you excited, right? It's a great day for hockey. The It's not too cold out. It's bearable. It's exciting. Guys got the toques on. They're ready to go. Hot chocolate's poured. We're, we're ready for some hockey. First uh, occasion in the history of the Nickel City Hockey Network where we get to give a weather report before face-off. About 34 degrees here in downtown Buffalo along the banks of the Buffalo River. And we are set to go with puck drop between Niagara and Fredonia live from Riverworks. And we are underway with the first period getting started here. It will be Niagara moving from right to left wearing their third gray jerseys. Also wearing their third third jerseys today, it is the uh, Fredonia Blue Devils in their black thirds. So it is gray and black here for the outdoor game as we are underway with the puck deep in the Fredonia zone. Niagara with possession of it there just along the circle, unable to really get something set up there as Clendenning now chases it down in the Niagara zone. Clendenning with some pressure on him there in the far corner. That is Noah Curiel creating a turnover. And now Niagara looks to break it through the neutral zone. Across the blue line and into the offensive zone is Tucker Trask, but he loses control of that one as it's Nate Kernan taking it away. Kept in at the blue line. Shot coming in right on goal. That was Easton Gallagher getting a shot almost on goal. Looked like it got deflected just wide late. Puck back into the Niagara zone. Gallagher picking it up and looking to start the breakout. That pass just a little bit off the mark and it comes into the neutral zone. Fredonia regaining control there with Eli Mulville. Mulville on the far side, a little bit of room to work it through the neutral zone. He gains the blue line, fires it in on goal. Save is made by the Niagara starting goaltender today. That is Joe Willis, number 35, getting his first touch on the puck here in the early going as now Niagara works it through the neutral zone just below our broadcast position. Unable to get it deep into the offensive zone, is now creating a turnover in the neutral zone. It's Connor McGrath, two on one setting up. Just couldn't get that pass onto the tape for Ryan Zablonski. Puck in the near corner of the Niagara zone. As it comes cross ice, and now Niagara finding control. Matt Riddle with the puck there, getting it through center ice. And now into the offensive zone. This is Patrick Hemming looking to start something. Eventually that puck gets to a teammate. That shot just going wide. Puck along the blue line of the Fredonia zone. They find control, now setting up a D to D pass as they look to work it on the far side. Set up there for Jablonski. Plenty of room to dump that one in. Fredonia looking to make some changes. Niagara setting up their breakout as it's Justin Bull banking it up the far boards, unable to find a teammate there, and it's back for Chase Kelpin in the Fredonia zone. First breakout pass doesn't connect, and now they try to battle it up the near side. It ends up being sent down deep into the corner, as now it's going to be the far side where Kelpin tries to start the breakout. Off the skate of Williams, but he gets it deep into the offensive zone, now looking to put some pressure on the defenseman there. Curiel gets it away from that pressure, now looking to start the breakout, but a turnover, and the puck comes right in front of the net. Hammered home by Brady Ventura. It's a one nothing game here early on. Didn't have a whistle in the first two and a half minutes, Brian, but the first whistle comes with a Fredonia goal. Yeah, a little bit of a feeling out process there from both teams as they try to get their feet underneath them. Uh, early turnover, you're not gonna miss many from there. It's, uh, it's a tough first save for Willis to have right on the doorstep like that. And off to a great start for Fredonia. And that's certainly what uh, Fredonia had to like to see developing there in the offensive zone. Change of possession, and then they have numbers right in front of the net. And Ventura making it pay off, picking up his seventh of the season. Puck deep in the Fredonia zone, set up by the starting goaltender for the Blue Devils. That is number one, Ryan Albert, in net this afternoon. Puck up the far side to the blue line and out. Set up there by the defenseman, Curiel, and Niger gets it right back into the offensive zone. Goaltender out of his net again. Albert setting it up for a defenseman. Fredonia trying to work the breakout on the near side. As the puck is up against the near boards, players from each side trying to battle for possession as it finally comes across the blue line into the neutral zone. Niger sending it back in, but Fredonia getting it set up and now coming through center ice. This is Clendenning. Clendenning across the blue line. Gets it deep into the offensive zone as, as Fredonia tries to get something set up here on the near side. Back through into center ice as Kernan sends it right back in. Fredonia now tagging up and getting a line change in. Should be plenty of time for the Perps to move it up the far side. Puck sent in from the neutral zone. 
Looked like that might have been an, a, a possible icing wave. call. I was uh, didn't see that waved off, but it was a surprise that it wasn't called. Still, it's Fredonia looking to uh, get things going up the far side. This is Nate Kernan with plenty of speed. Kernan around one defender, just can't quite hunt that puck down before it got below the goal line. Puck taken away from him, and this is going to be Tucker Trask starting it up the far side. Fredonia player losing his stick there, looking for a penalty, but none coming. Into the offensive zone. Niagara now looking to get things set up with Tanner Zilka. Can't find a teammate there, and now Fredonia gets it out of the zone, looking to start it up the near wall. Can't get it into the zone, now looking to regroup just inside their own blue line. Connor Harris' pass misses the mark. That one's also going to have an icing waved off as uh, the waved off icings are traded on both sides. Now Niagara looking to start the breakout on the near wall. This has cold feet written all over it from the linesman today. Just want to keep moving. Yep, got to keep it moving. Any whistle means that you're slowing down <laughs> and you have the potential to get a little bit more cold. So uh, maybe see uh, that, that whistle swallowed just a little bit when it comes to some of those borderline plays this afternoon. This could be record time. Niagara with an opportunity in front of the net. Nice setup down low as it looked like a uh, quick two-on-one opportunity that was set up below the hash marks. Pass came in front. Now a little bit of uh, exchange of pleasantries between the two teams. Not even five minutes in, starting to get the uh, temperature up a little bit, but you need that in a cold day like this. you got to find a way to get the internal temperature up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be brisk out there, so if you can mix it up, get a little adrenaline flowing, it'll help you get through the day. Just a light north wind here today in downtown Buffalo, but that allows us to uh, enjoy the smells of the General Mills plant just to our north here, just to the northwest, as uh, kind of the mix of Cheerios and Lucky Charms this evening. Fredonia with an opportunity in the offensive zone. A sprawling save by Joe Willis, keeping that uh, clearing attempt from the, getting from the far corner in front of the net. Willis had to uh, lay out to make that catch. Looked like an outfielder holding that one in. I think early on the, the pace from Fredonia has been a bit better than where Niagara's been at early on. Uh, a little more direct, getting their feet moving a little bit more, and it's paid off here with the early lead. Two Fredonia players down low, setting up some four-check pressure, but Niagara manages to escape that pressure, but they can't get it out, however. Some pressure now on the far side as uh, Niagara unable to really get that breakout going again. The forecheck really helping here as, as two shots in on goal. Jab Jablonski's first one there stopped by Willis as he has been certainly the busier goaltender here in the early going. Offsides along the Niagara blue line and we'll have a stoppage of play with 14.38 now remaining in period number one. Blue Devils out to the one nothing lead. Something to pay attention to early. That's already the second chance from, from inside that slot area both of which off of turnovers, off of a good forecheck from Fredonia. So Niagara's really going to have to be sharp on those turnovers, making sure they have good coverage in front. Niagara defensemen certainly will be tested here in this one with the very offensive Fredonia squad as actually we're going to get an opportunity now for the Fredonia power play to go to work. Taking the interference penalty is going to be number five, Noah Curiel. And we get an opportunity for the Fredonia power play to go to work here as we are a little bit more than five minutes into the action here from Riverworks in downtown Buffalo. Fredonia's already got a one nothing lead. Now a chance in the power play, Brian. Yeah, not something you're going to want to do early on uh, with this Fredonia team with both Kernan and Schlifke uh, on the back end kind of running that power play unit for them. You don't want to give them too many chances. They can be pretty dangerous from here. This uh, Fredonia team loves to run the offense from the blue line. The uh, defensemen are all quite offensive players, the two that are out there especially so, as mentioned by uh, my partner here, Brian Thompson. Nate Kernan is uh, not surprisingly the leading scorer when you see him play. You see the offensive skill set that he has, especially notable here on the power play. He's got 29, 24 assists on the season. Nine of them are power play assists. That's not surprising. You know, a lot of their offense is going to run through him. Uh, you know, I think he's a pretty special player with the way he can kind of control the pace and, and, dis and distribute the puck, rather. Uh, anytime you can be two points a game as a defenseman at, at any level, you're, uh, you're a pretty special player. In terms of putting him home on the power play, the player to keep an eye on, number seven, Kyle Giroux. Six of his 11 goals this season have come with the man advantage. Jarose putting some pressure on on the far side. Kernan gets that loose puck and makes sure it gets deep. Jarose sets it up there but can't get it past Kiesman. Kiesman with a nice play there, getting that puck cleared the length of the ice. No time on the uh, penalty clock there, so we're just going to have to feel it here in terms of uh, how much time's left. Actually, the clock not moving at all right now. Just says 14-11, and it still is Kernan gets it into the offensive zone. Here, a couple of calls for the clock as it finally starts moving. Now 13.44 as it skipped about 25 seconds there on us. Not exactly sure how much time's left in the power play. I'm guessing around a minute. 
Schlipke here on the near side. Cross ice pass to Clendenning. Great setup there and a great save by Willis. Has to make a second save on DeRose right in front of the net as the Fredonia power play getting set up very well in the offensive zone, connecting on that cross ice pass. Good save by Willis to go from side to side and make that stop. I think a lot of that's going to be originated actually from your net front presence there. He drew a lot of attention in front, uh, allows for some of those seams to go through the penalty killers and, and a good save by Willis. Somewhere around 45 seconds to go in the power play, I'm guessing, with uh, Fredonia winning the faceoff. Back to the point to Williams. Gets it along the near wall where McGrath handles it. Cross ice pass, shot from Mulville. That one gets deflected. Nice stick there by the Niagara player, making sure that puck didn't get on goal. Now we have a little bit of uh, pushing and shoving behind the Niagara net as the Niagara defenseman went well out of his way to go after Jablonski there. And I think that they both just earned themselves penalties. Connors and Jablonski. Actually, it looks like it's just Connors going to the box right now. He's going to get both of them for pushing yeah. and shoving and making some early Valentine's Day plans. Whatever it was that uh, Jablonski did to catch Connors' attention, it was quite a bit because Connors skated about six or seven strides to get over to him to uh, let him know that he was none too pleased with whatever it was. And it looks like uh, each of them will just be handed a pair of two-minute minors and we continue with the Fredonia power play. Looks like a stern talking to from Stripes today. You think that's really going to help much? It might. Time will tell. For about two minutes, the time that they serve the penalty. Fredonia wins control of the faceoff as this is McGrath trying to set something up down low. Gets knocked down on the play as Fredonia still finds possession of it behind the net. Now looking to get that power play set up as it's print up in the far corner. Printup skates it towards the blue line. Now Williams at the midpoint. Shot coming through. That one's deflected. Not on goal, though, as McGrath got just enough of it to get the change of direction, but couldn't quite find the net with it. Fredonia getting the clear as they're still killing off the last few seconds of this penalty. Williams starting it up the near wall. As Fredonia unable to get it out of the zone, Niger doing a good job killing off the last bit of this power play. Kiesman, cross ice pass as we have a whistle blown here. Tough to exactly tell whether or not that whistle was from our rink or from the rink behind us, but it does appear that we have a, another pair of uh, incidental minors being handed out here. Player from each side going to the penalty box as uh, the emotions starting to uh, certainly ramp up here, not even uh, eight minutes in. Yeah, there's a lot of pushing and shoving and kind of yapping uh, between plays, behind the play, in between whistles, so. Uh, pretty clear standard set by the officiating crew here that uh, they're not going to handle that stuff. So uh, we'll see who makes the adjustment first. So still a couple of seconds remaining in the original Niagara penalty. And then we should be back to five on five here shortly. But Fredonia in the offensive zone, redirected shot. Nice play there as it was Polito getting the redirection. Then the shot is taken from the far boards. It gets past Willis. And it's now 2 0 Fredonia. Looked like that was Clendenning that took that shot from the far wall. A lively board too. That puck came out uh, a bit hotter than I think Willis was anticipating. And, you know, you get it right back to the front, you get a fortunate bounce, and, and uh, up 2 nothing. Game of bounces it certainly is, and this bounce goes in the favor of the Fredonia Blue Devils and allows them to open up a 2 nothing lead, not even eight minutes in here. I know it's cliche, but I think that's why they always say get pucks to the net, right? You never know what you're going to get. Uh, can't win the raffle if you don't buy a ticket. So that's just getting it there and uh, fortunate enough to find a hole. Whenever it can happen that quickly that it's difficult for a goaltender to get set and get himself square to where that shot's going to be coming from, that always uh, certainly creates a little bit more offensive opportunity. In this case, it's Clendenning that puts it away. Now 2-0 for Donia as uh, we have a little bit of a discussion here at center ice. I'm not sure exactly what the delay is right now, but... Uh, this lack of a penalty clock has thrown some people for a loop. I think we're sorting out times and when people are going to join us and what the situation is. Well, as we get that cleared up, this broadcast this evening is made possible by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility, simulators, lessons, and leagues. Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction with locations in downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. All right, we're ready for the faceoff here. 12.26 to go in the first period. Fredonia now leading by a score of two to nothing. Had the uh, benefit of a little bit of power play time. That goal ended up coming five on five. However, we see whether or not Niagara can get a response. Justin Bull is the player to do that responding and he manages to get that one past the netminder. 
Now 2-1 as Niagara quickly gets on the board after the Blue Devils opened up that two-goal lead. It's a really nice job by Niagara answering uh, quickly here, forcing a turnover coming out of their own zone from Kernan. Um, quick play to the front of the net. Find yourself a spot, and uh, you're right back in it. No real surprise that it's Justin Bull doing the work and getting the goal his 10th of the season. He had over 100 points in his high school career at Star Point. He's got his team on the board here at a time when they absolutely needed it because it seemed like an opportunity in the game for Fredonia to really open up a little bit of separation. Yeah, they've been kind of second to most loose pucks and, and kind of a little late to the start today. So uh, to get a chance to get right back in it and you're, you're back to a one goal game, they'll, they'll feel a lot better about it now. A little bit of life now in the Purple Eagles as they have possession just inside their own blue line. That uh -oh. pass a little bit off ends up resulting in an opportunity for Taylor, but just barely missing the far post. Niagara through the neutral zone, passes behind Matt Riddle. Dominic Zimmer trying to start it up the near side. He gets it out into the neutral zone. Fredonia now looking to get it deep in the offensive zone. Collision just inside the blue line as I believe we have an offsides call at the blue line. A little bit tough from our broadcast perspective up here. Tough angle as we look down just along the uh, benches here, but seems that we did have the offsides call. Both teams getting ready for this faceoff along the Niagara blue line. Prince up and Ostasevich on the draw. Niagara finding possession. Can't get it up ice very far though as it's gonna be Zimmer sending it into the Niagara zone. Niagara creates a turnover. Now Obrakta starts it up through the neutral zone. Settled down there by Ostasevich and he gets it deep in on goal. Handled by the glove of Ryan Albert. No real company around him though. He decides to hold on to it nonetheless. Gets the whistle from the referee and we get a stoppage with 11-12 now remaining in the first period. Our broadcast this evening brought to you by Militello Realty. Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker to buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property. Trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. Face off to the left of Albert. Niagara winning possession of the draw. Shot coming in from the point right in on goal. Albert steering that one away with the stick. Puck comes out to center ice. D to D pass as Niagara looks to send it back into the offensive zone. This is going to be Jacob Esposito getting it across the blue line. That sets up a shot opportunity right in on goal from Tanner Zilka. Fredonia finding control and now moving it through the neutral zone. This is Reese Taylor getting it across the blue line. Tries to get a shot through but gets tied up as he lets it go. Still a teammate ends up getting an opportunity to get a backhand shot on goal. That one just missed wide. And now we're going to have a penalty called as I believe this one's going to go against Fredonia. Yep, that's going to be Reese Taylor heading to the penalty box. A two-minute hooking call, so opportunity now for Niagara to potentially draw even here in this one. They have the game's most recent goal, and now they get the man advantage with a little bit more than 10 minutes to go in the period. Yeah, I think that goal has kind of woken up Niagara a little bit here over the last few minutes. They've been carrying play, uh, and a huge opportunity here to even it up on the power play. Riddle out there to take the face off as he... Gets his teammates set up properly. One last change coming here from the Purple Eagles. Riddle and Polito on the faceoff. Polito ends up finding control. That one, Fredonia quickly up ice. Going to create a little bit of offense potentially there on the shorthanded opportunity. It's going to be Riddle setting it up now and getting it across ice to Owen Kiesman. Kiesman through the neutral zone across the blue line. Backhand pass to the far side. Justin Bull gets it there. That pass just a little off the mark and that allows Fredonia to get clear. Polito taking a big hit to do so, but he does get it the length of the ice. About 30 seconds gone on the Niagara power play. Turnover created in front of the net. Good chance there for Brady Ventura to get his second of the game. Got knocked down as he let the shot go. Good turnover to create a little bit of difficulty for the power play. That's a fortunate break for Niagara. I think, uh, I think they owe Joe uh, maybe a dinner after this. Niagara now getting that power play set up. Puck along the near wall, back to the point. Unable to hold it in there at the blue line, though, was Tyler Gross. Maybe a two-on-one here for Fredonia. Puck on the far side, just really didn't have that pass option set up in front. Still tried to get it to Polito. Good defensive coverage by Justin Bull, who now carries it through the neutral zone. Bull across the blue line, makes a nice move on the defenseman, just can't quite maintain possession to get a shot away. Still has it, now gets it back to the point to Gallagher. Gallagher's shot, catch the goaltender leaning. There's plenty of net to find as well, and it ends up getting into the back of the net. It's now a 2-1 game as the goal scorer is number 11, Tucker Trask. I think Trask finds himself in the high slot there. It's a really nice tip on a puck towards the net. Uh, no, not much of a chance for the goaltender on that one. 
Well, the teams trade goals here in this one. Fredonia gets the first two. Niagara gets the next two. Back where we started a little less than, or a little bit more than 10 minutes into the action. It's a 2-2 hockey game, and uh, certainly we knew we'd be in for an exciting evening with outdoor hockey anytime you have a game outdoors, and uh, both teams are bringing the offense as well. They're going for it. It's good to see you guys are having fun. They're excited. They're making plays. Uh, could be in for, uh, for an exciting one the rest of the way. And we heard from both of the teams that uh, players were very excited about this matchup. Niagara players talking about it all week long. They had a game on Monday, but uh, they're certainly uh, bringing the energy now. A little bit of a sleepy start, but once they got that first goal, they really have taken off, found a lot of new life. Nine minutes to go in the first period. Is this going to be Gallagher in the far corner, or the near corner rather, starting it up the boards? Three different Fredonia players meet him there. And it makes the breakout a little bit difficult, but they still have possession of it now on the far side. Jarose creates a turnover. Now Fredonia going to work in the offensive zone. Jarose tries to make a move around one man, unable to really get anything going with that. And now a chance for Tanner Zilka to carry it up ice for the Purple Eagles. Zilka on the far side, curls to create a little bit of room, stops and gets a little bit more space to work with. Almost caught the uh, return pass for the give and go play out of the corner, but Niagara still has possession here in the near side. Puck to the near boards, the near point where it's kept in by Krautwurst. Down below the goal line where it's found by Eli Mulville for Fredonia. Blue Devils can't get it out of the zone as uh, Niagara certainly has plenty of life from their two goals here in this game. Stoppage in play now coming with 8-10 to go in period number one. And the uh, pace certainly maintaining throughout here the first 12 minutes. Yeah, I think a little sloppy, a little bit of a feeling out process for the first five, six minutes of the game, but a couple early goals and a good response from Niagara, and pace is definitely picked up. Our broadcast this afternoon brought to you by Envious Gameware, designers of custom hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel. Visit enviousgameware.com to get your team a look to be envious of. Fredonia winning the faceoff, now starting the breakout up the near side. Unable to connect on that in the neutral zone. It's sent back in across the blue line. Niagara with a chance to set up a turnover there, but we have the uh, whistle blown here along the blue line, and now we have a little bit more of the tempers flaring as that was Asta Savage running his man over, That was, and I believe it was McGrath that he ended up knocking to the ice. Asta Savage being shown to the penalty box, so Fredonia is going to be granted a pretty beneficial power play here. Didn't do a whole lot of work to earn it, but uh, they're going to get the man advantage out of it nonetheless. Yeah, we're going to chalk that up to a uh, frozen brain. Maybe a lack of judgment on that one. That's not a whole lot there, and, and now you put yourself and, and your team in a difficult, difficult position having to kill off a penalty. Just when you have plenty of momentum in the game as well, it looks like the uh, the, the time in the game where you at least want to take a penalty if you're Niagara. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what the, what the motive was there, but uh, hopefully his team can bail him out here. Whatever was said, it must have been enough to warrant a physical response. See whether or not the, uh, as, as mentioned by Brian, whether or not his team can back him up and kill off this penalty. Fredonia finds that first shooting opportunity, but a little bit of friendly fire there as Printup hit his own man with the shot. Printup now in the far corner, trying to make a move on the defender there. He has a little bit of space. Now back to the point to Schlifke. Schlifke gives it back to Printup. He walks in and takes a shot. It looks like it got deflected late by Jablonski. Ended up going high and wide over the net. Kiesman creates a turnover. Gets it Look up out. to Obrachta. Two on one now setting up shorthanded. Obrachta across the blue line. He's got a man with him. Tries to feed that pass across. Great defensive play as Schlifke put one knee down and got the just enough of his leg on that one to keep the pass from getting to the front net front there. Albert ends up covering it up to get a whistle. 2-2 game it remains. Yeah, that was really well played by Schlifke. Uh, not only keeping the shooter outside the dots, but also doing a really good job of taking away that passing lane, uh, making it a relatively routine save for the goaltender. Face off to the right of Albert. Didn't quite check the exact, I think it was eight minutes exactly when the power play started, so minute 15 to go in this Blue Devil man advantage. Eli Mulville with some speed and room to skate it up the far side. He gains the blue line and takes a shot from distance. Blocker saved by Joe Willis. Puck sent along the near side. Niagara's going to have a chance to clear, and they do so. Puck goes off the stick of Williams as he hunts it down in the near corner. Williams with a little bit of a dangerous pass there. Clendenning manages to get it away from the 1-4 checker. But uh, Fredonia with a little bit of difficulty connecting on that second pass. They have to regroup before they can start it up the far side. Adam Polito now looking to skate it up ice. Good defensive play made there by number 11, Tucker Trask, and that kills off a little bit more time. Yeah, these killing forwards are doing a nice job of disrupting the timing here on this breakout. 
Polito now regrouping yet again along the blue line. Uses his speed to get some room through the neutral zone. Now he's drawing a penalty as he gets hauled down on the play. Cam Swake is pulling him down as he gained the blue line. So now a two-man advantage for 29 seconds for Fredonia. Big opportunity here about a little bit more than halfway through the period. Fredonia is going to get five on three for 29 seconds. Yeah, I was just going to compliment the Niagara forwards on their good active sticks on the, on the penalty kill. A uh, little too active on that stick, pulling the feet out from underneath the Fredonia attacker. And a good distance from the net, too. Probably one yeah. of those penalties that uh, got an eye roll from the coaching staff. Yeah, one you just want to recover hard through the middle of the ice and live to fight another day. Fredonia wins the faceoff, but it ends up going right between the two defensemen. And now Kernan looking to load it up on the far side, but he's got a man right in his hip pocket. Really good play by Dominic Goodno. Player gets knocked down on the far side, but Fredonia still manages to keep possession. One-on-one -on -one battle in that far corner as the puck gets squeezed out towards the net. Elias Print up picking it up there as the first Niagara penalty expires. Shot from distance, right on goal from Schliffke. Pad save made by Willis. Kernan picks up the rebound. Tries to wrap that pass around the near side. Couldn't quite find Ventura in front of the net. And now it's going to be Kiesman looking to get the clear. Fans on that attempt. Ventura now has it looking for a stuff play on the near post. Just couldn't quite get that right angle to get that shot in on Willis. Puck is cleared to the neutral zone. As now Fredonia sending it right back in off the stick of Ventura. And it's going to be McGrath putting some pressure on the defenseman here in the near corner. Battle against the near wall is three different Niagara players over there. Eventually, two of them retreat as they didn't want to have too many players that far away from the net. Kernan finding the loose puck, gets it to Schliffke, tries to make a pass to the near post. Couldn't quite get it through the defenseman. Now a bouncing puck by the doorstep. Ends up being cleared by the Purple Eagles as they have killed off at least the first part of this penalty. Still about 30 seconds or so to go on the second penalty. Yeah, the early power play opportunities for Fredonia, they were harder on pucks, they were retrieving them quicker and having that shooter's mentality. The, the last little bit here, it's been a little individual. Uh, Niagara's doing a good job out in armoring the puck and, and getting some clears. Almost an opportunity for Riddle to create a break opportunity, but it almost turns into a two-on-one down low for Fredonia. Good defensive play there in front of the net. Noah Curiel getting enough of that stick on puck to keep that pass from getting across. Under 4.30 to go in the period as Niagara gets the clear out of the zone, but they only get it to the red line. Nonetheless, the second Niagara penalty has expired and they kill off both of those minor penalties. Big moment there for the Niagara penalty killers and the team in general as they didn't want to lose any of the momentum that they had built up earlier on in the period. Yeah, getting through those kills is huge. That could be a pretty big momentum swing for them. I'll see if they're able to capitalize on it and uh, finish the period strong. Our broadcast this afternoon brought to you by the Bataglia Marciano Agency, an independent agent for auto, homeowners, business, and life insurance. The Bataglia Marciano Agency providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. I think if you're the Niagara coach, you're, you're preaching to your bench, stay out of the box. The last little bit, you've been the better team, you're carrying play, and then you shoot yourself in the foot by taking penalties. Matt Riddle with the shot from distance, right in between the blue line and the top of the circle. Glove save made by Albert is yet a nice clear look at that one. Under four minutes to play in period number one, still a 2-2 game. As uh, I think the last four minutes here will be an opportunity for one team to maybe take a little bit of extra life into the dressing room for first intermission. Pretty even right now is where this game is. Yeah, there's been a little bit of a punch counter punch, right? I mean, Fredonia came out hard, they, they had a good start to the game. Niagara's carried most of the mid part of the period, so we'll, we'll see who can take, uh, take at the end of the period. Bouncing puck almost ends up on the stick of Adam Polito. Just couldn't quite get that one pushed forward to get it away from the Niagara defenseman there in the neutral zone. Blue Devils still find possession along their own blue line. Polito has it here at center ice as he circles and gets it across the blue line. Polito cutting towards the slot, lets that shot go. It goes off a skate and goes wide. Ventura, though, in the far corner as he's got control with three different players on him. Still manages to get that puck towards the front of the net. Willis getting the cover, and now uh, the uh, exchange of pleasantries again continuing here as the Niagara players certainly aggressive when it comes to those post-whistle plays. I mean, you have to appreciate sticking up for your goaltender. They you know, felt maybe a little bit of an extra whack there, but they got to be careful to, to not do anything undisciplined and, and put your team behind again. Another little uh, lecture being given there as Tyler Connors is having the uh, referee's view explained to him on what he saw on that play. Another attempt to try to quell the tempers here early on because we still have a lot of hockey to go. Referee's got a bit of a power stance going on. He's a very intimidating figure when he's 
lecturing the, the players on their decisions, life choices. Hard to determine whether or not that really is effective, though. It's not. Puck on the far side as Niagara has some room to work it through the neutral zone. Good move there just inside the red line, yeah. but uh, unfortunately offsides on the play. Swakis ends up going in across the blue line ahead of time after uh, Esposito made a couple of nice moves there through the neutral zone. Faceoff will be along the Fredonia blue line as we now have 3.07 remaining in first period play. Faceoff one to the near boards. Let's see which team can gain possession of it. Continued to trade possession back and forth. Eventually it's sent deep. Chase Kalpin now looking to start the breakout for the Blue Devils. Has plenty of time to make a decision. Finally gets it up ice. And now in across the blue line off the stick of Ventura as he takes a hit to dump it in. Gallagher starting the breakout for the Purple Eagles, but his pass is in Esposito skates. Ooh. Almost the uh, move around the defenseman by Jablonski. Just couldn't quite get past the shoulder there to what would have been an opportunity to get a break right towards the net with no defenseman in front of him, but a good bit of physicality keeping that rush from really developing. Yeah, Semper's been a wrecking ball here this first period. I think if you're Fredonia, you got to be aware when he's on the ice because he's not looking to play pucks. He's going through the body and uh, you know playing good, strong physical defense. Another bit of physicality there on the far side, but Fredonia keeping possession. Only long enough to get a pass right to the net front, but Willis gets it to a teammate, and then Niagara moves it out of the zone. But Kernan quickly coming back in the other direction. Good play by his fellow defender, Easton Gallagher, keeping Kernan from having a really good scoring opportunity. I think if you're Kernan there, you got to use your feet. You have the edge. You can probably beat him just going hard to the net. Tries the, you know, a little bit of an unnecessary toe drag. Breakaway pass set up there. Not a whole lot of speed to make it pay off for Swake as oh. still gets a chance to get a shot on net. And then that opportunity being set up in front. Tucker Trask maybe had a little bit too much on it to really get a shot away. Puck sent into the Fredonia zone. This one's going to go far enough for icing as Kernan wins the foot race to the hash marks. Face off coming back to the Niagara zone. A minute 33 to go in period number one. Faceoff's going to be in the near side. A little bit of confusion about where it would be. And it's going to be Trask and Jarose on for the faceoff. Shot right off the draw by Polito, but a good clear look there for Joe Willis. He makes the stave with the stick, catches it with the glove, and holds on for a whistle. Now 126 to go in period number one. A couple of changes here coming on the back end for Niagara as they want to make sure they have the proper defenders out there with enough energy and conditioning for the last 126 of the period. Niagara wins the faceoff. Puck comes to the far corner. Curiel's pass eventually gets to a winger and they move it through the neutral zone. Bit of a foot race here as Riddle's going to get to it quickly. Loses his stick though as he tries to knock that one off of Schlifke's stick. And now it's going to be Jarose catching that pass and looking to start it up the near wall. Losing control of it as Niagara creates a turnover. Battle along the near wall. It eventually comes free. Kept in at the point by Kiesman. He gets it to the net front. A couple of opportunities to get a shot on goal there. Didn't quite get it to the goaltender. Puck kept in on the far side of the blue line. Polito, though, gets it out of the zone. Now looking to get it into the offensive end of things. Tries to get a pass across to Clendenning. Can't get it there. And now Justin Bull looking to carry it up ice. Bull gets hammered there before he can get it out of the zone. Polito laying the shoulder into him. And now Clendenning here in the near corner. Clendenning takes a hit as he makes that pass towards the front of the net. Niagara intercepting it. Now Riddle up ice as he gets that one into the offensive zone. But we have a whistle blown here on the offsides call. As now 25.6 seconds remaining in the first period. Still our 2-2 score in place as our supporters today also include Pups Styled by Jesse. One-on-one -on -one grooming services that will have your dog looking forward to its next grooming visit. Voted best of 716 Pet Groomer for 2022 and 2023. Pups Styled by Jesse on Main Street in Clarence just east of Transit Road. Back to back Last. champs, it's impressive. Last 20 seconds of the period, almost a fumbled puck there by Willis. Could have created an opportunity for Ventura in front of the net. Look Good out. work by the defenseman is now under 10 seconds. A chance to get a shot away. That one just barely missing the net. Ryan Obrachta with a chance to have his team take the lead into the locker room. Ends up not able to get the puck on goal as we have, I'm guessing, the whistle to end period number one. I didn't actually hear a horn. 
The clock still says five seconds, but I'm pretty sure period number one is now come to a conclusion with the score 2-2 as Niagara got the uh, two goals to come back here in this game. It was Fredonia getting the first two goals of the period, Niagara getting even as they got two later on in period number one. And that's our score as we head to the locker room after one period of play. It is Niagara 2 and Fredonia 2. So we said it was kind of a feeling out period early in this game, and then uh, each team had their bit of momentum that they moved forward with. Yeah, I think early on you've got the outside conditions. It's a little different environment. We're unsure. A lot of pucks kind of bouncing places, feeling each other out. Uh, Fredonia gets the two early and, and really kind of takes the, the tempo of the game. Niagara does a great job of pushing back, you know, getting the game back to even, and as we mentioned earlier, carrying the play for large stretches. Uh, so I think 2-2 overall is fair. Each team looked better in, in parts of the game, and what will be interesting is as this game goes on, you can already see pucks starting to bounce a little bit. You wonder about the ice conditions the longer this goes. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see who does a better job of managing things moving forward. And that's it's a good point that you bring up because there is also a youth tournament going on here this weekend here at Riverworks. So the ice has gotten a lot of work already today. Yeah. And uh, you wonder if those uh, bouncing pucks will be a factor as the game continues. We saw it a little bit there in the first period. Keep an eye on that as things continue on for periods two and three. We'll take a break here as they resurface the ice during the first intermission. We'll be back in about 10 minutes with period number two. You're watching live coverage of the UNYCHO on the Nickel City Hockey Network. We'll be back in about 10 minutes with the second period. 2-2 is our score between Niagara and Fredonia. Modern media is everyone shouting for attention and no one hearing a thing. Broadcast to social, print to digital, 412 Communications has the solution to get you heard. Want to know more? Visit 412communications.com today. People ask, what is Buffalo Golf and Social? Buffalo Golf and Social is anything you want it to be. It can be the best instruction. It can be a vibe. It can be a hangout with your friends, running a simulator for four hours, playing your own playlist, and putting a game up on the TV. We are about everything and anything pertaining to golf. And most importantly, we are trying to build a community of players and a community of people who love and are dedicated to the game.
And welcome back to Riverworks in downtown Buffalo as Nickel City Hockey Network brings you live coverage of the Upstate New York Collegiate Hockey League. It is Fredonia and Niagara about set to go for second period play. Hello, I'm Aaron Elpern alongside color commentator Brian Thompson, camera operator Jeff Jazerowski as we join you from the 412 Communications broadcast booth. 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions. Underway here in second period play, and it was a first period in which the two teams traded pairs of goals. It was Fredonia getting the first two goals of the game. Niagara chipping away at it, making it a 2-2 game as we enter period number two. That yeah, was a really good response by Niagara. Uh, feisty, physical affair. Uh, a lot of yapping back and forth, a lot of physical play, so be excited to see what carries over here into the second. First goal of the game scored by Brady Ventura. Assist going to Lucas Williams and Dominic Zimmer. Kyle Jarose got the second goal of the game at 12.26 to go in the period. Adam Polito, Colton Clendenning getting the assists on, the, on that goal. But it was a very quick response coming from Niagara. Not even 25 seconds later, Justin Bull gets on the board, making it a 2-1 game. Patrick Hemming getting the assist on that goal. Easton Gallagher got the equalizer, making it 2-2. Now Gallagher looking to start the breakout. Gets the pass back on the far side as he looks for an option up the far boards. Banks it off the boards and gets it to the neutral zone. Clen Denning sends it right back to him, though, in the Niagara zone. Gallagher's pass banks off the near boards. Teammate finds control of it and gets it deep into the Fredonia zone. Sam Schlifke's the first one to it, though. Can't quite connect with two teammates in the neutral zone, and now Niagara has possession again. Gallagher looking for an option here in the far corner. Up the near boards as Niagara still with possession of it. Can't get that breakout going, though, and it's kept in by the purple, uh, by, by the Blue Devils. Player gets knocked over behind the net. Clen Denning, though, gets control of it against two different Niagara players on the far side and gets it to Jarose. Jarose drives towards the front of the net, tries to go from below the goal line to in front. Get that backhander through the net miner. Good save by Willis. Didn't even really get a good shot away as Willis made sure he put that paddle down. I've seen this from both teams so far that... Um, you know, managing the puck is going to be really important. There's a couple of goals in the first period off of turnovers, chance early on here in the second by not being able to get out cleanly when you have a chance. Fredonia wins the face off, a backhand shot off the stick of McGrath ends up getting deflected before it gets to the goaltender. Niagara getting the clear. This is going to be Mulville in the neutral zone looking to send it right back into the offensive zone. Now Fredonia setting up some pressure as it's Jablonski trying to get Kiesman to send an errant pass away. Kiesman does manage to get it to Curiel. Now he looks to change directions behind the net and get it out of the zone. Eli Mulville keeps it in, almost gets that one to print up in front of the net. But now it's going to be moving up ice. Dominic Goodno in the offensive zone for the Perps. Goodnow circling the net, feeds a pass back to the point. Unable to keep it in there, though, is the defender. And now it's back to the center ice area where Kiesman fans on his dump-in attempt. 
Goodno with some room here in the neutral zone, stops and then starts up the far side, gets away from one defender and gains the blue line. Now deep in the far corner, Goodno stopping on the defender there behind the net. He's got two different men on him. They do manage to get that puck free, but good aggressive play from the point by Kiesman. Kiesman keeping it in, almost leads to an opportunity in front for Zilka. Niagara keeping possession as they get a cycle play back down low. Good defense by Mulville to create a loose puck, and now here come the Blue Devils. Through the neutral zone as icing is waved off. Picked up in the near corner and then played up the near boards by Nolan Krautwurst, but it's going to be print up creating a turnover. Krautwurst with a second attempt to break it out on the near wall. Puck bounces towards a Niagara player and they eventually get it into the neutral zone. Bit of a collision there just below our broadcast position that allows Gooden now to take control of it as he looks for a lane up the far side. Bit of a bouncing puck again. We see some of the uh, ice conditions maybe playing a role there and it's gonna allow the Blue Devils to get going in the offensive zone. Puck comes through the high slot. Good now is gonna be the first one there for Niagara. Good now looking to circle the net, ends up stopping and now looking to start up the far side. Might have been better off just to get going there on, the, on that far side. He had a bit of a lane and now it's gonna be Fredonia keeping it into the blue line. Second attempt to get that puck out of the zone. This one does succeed as Hunter Kankowitz gets it out in the center ice. But Fredonia looking to counter quickly and bring it back in with Ventura. Looks like there might have been a potential hooking call there, but none coming as uh, Ventura certainly got the puck taken off of his stick because of that little bit of uh, stick work by the Niagara defender. Niagara clears the zone, but only briefly. They do manage to get it cleared yet again, and now they might have something developing here in the neutral zone. This is Matt Riddle bringing it in. Riddle has a little bit of room, drops that pass off. Good quick shot taken by Tanner Zilka. Looked like it just hit one of the defenseman's skates and went wide. Shot from distance, hits a leg, and then doesn't get through. Second attempt for Gallagher. That pass gets intercepted by Ventura, and he moves it through the neutral zone. Slowly into the Niagara zone. Riddle looking to counter quickly for the Purple Eagles. Gets it up ice, but a good bit of physicality by Zimmer on the far side. He took the worst part of that hit, but he did make a good play to get his uh, opponent off the puck. Sometimes you just got to be willing to take that hit to make a play. Good strong uh, on his skates and delivers his own, uh, his own shot there. Niagara quickly finding control and moving it out to center ice, but they can't really get that pass connected on in the neutral zone. That allows Polito to bring it back into the offensive zone. Puck goes off of a skate and then into the neutral zone. Fredoni looking to regroup here as this is going to be Nate Kernan, who's had a bit of a quiet game for him, the leading scorer of the Fredoni Blue Devils. But he uh, still has plenty of time left here in the action as we are have more than half of the game left for number 26 to have his presence known. Puck goes up and out of play. 15-29 remaining in period number two. Still a 2-2 score as uh, this period has certainly had a lot of hockey in the neutral zone. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of ugly, to be honest. I think there's a you know, combination of some bouncing pucks, uh, you know, trying to do too much at times instead of just kind of taking the zone and taking the space that's in front of you and, and getting pucks in behind the goal line. So we'll, we'll see how the rest of the play unfolds here. Bit of a false start there on that faceoff. Schliffke managed to get a shot through, but the uh, linesman blowing the play dead. And now we'll have the uh, faceoff done again from that far circle of the Niagara zone. Second period coverage this evening brought to you by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's best destination for year-round practice and instruction with locations in downtown Buffalo and in Orchard Park. Puck cleared into the neutral zone. Nate Kernan picking it up there, looking to get it back up ice. Does manage to get it into the offensive zone, but it's going to be Owen Kiesman there for Niagara getting it up ice. And again, it's going to be back to the defenseman Kernan as the two teams still trading possession a lot here in the neutral zone. Fredonia on the far side gets it into the zone. Bit of a misplayed puck there, and it could be a chance in front of the net. Kernan had that first shot. Save was made by Willis, but he can't get it covered up. Ends up being played from behind the net, and it ends up getting across the goal line. Willis couldn't find where that puck was in the scramble. It ends up sneaking through, crossing the goal line. Fredonia takes the 3-2 lead on a wild play in front of the Niagara net. What was that about a quiet night there, Aaron, for Kernan? Right on cue, he was just waiting for you to call his name, and then there he is, bouncing on a loose puck, taking advantage of an opportunity. Uh, a little bit of a scramble and a bouncing puck finds its way in. Is that the announcer's curse or the, uh, the opposite of it? I believe it depends on who you're rooting for. I think he's going to say thanks for the bump. Uh, Niagara's probably not too happy with you, though. I really don't believe that anything I said had any impact on the game on the ice, but Everyone you, else never does. you never know if they're actually listening to the broadcast on the bench. I'm doubting it because it just doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah, well, you know. 
Opportunity here in tight as Niger gets it right to the front of the net, looking to get that equalizer quickly. They get a good chance there as letting that shot go was Tyler Gross. Good save as Ryan Albert gets his first real test of period number two. Almost got the immediate response, just like we did in the first period. I was, I was just thinking, I, I wonder if they just wait for Fredoni to score to start playing. That's uh, each of the you know first and second period so far that they've had a response right away post Fredonia goal. Just need that wake-up call, apparently. Puck here in the near corner as Mulville evades a check to get it to print up. Now Mulville has to do some work himself, but he has two different Niagara players that he had to battle through. Obrakta ends up getting a shot through. That one just barely missing the near post. Fredonia trying to clear it on the far side, but good work by the Niagara four check. They create a loose puck, and then the shot from the point. That one gets deflected high and wide, but it's now settled in behind the Fredonia goal. Good play to start the breakout up the far side. McGrath banking it off the boards, taking a hit in the process, but he does manage to get it up ice. McGrath has the puck again just inside his own blue line as he looks to skate it up the far side and takes another hit. Both players go down in that exchange as the puck is sent in across the blue line. And this is going to be Sempert looking to move it up ice for the Purple Eagles. Big hit there along the blue line as Sempert throws his shoulder into his fellow number 29, McGrath. McGrath loses his helmet in the process as now we have a lot of chatter going on between these two teams. I'm not sure there's anything that the referees are going to be able to do at this point in the game, Brian, in order to try to lower that temperature. I don't know that you need to. I kind of like it. It's, oh, uh, I'm not complaining. Fi some physical play here uh, and some loose pucks. Guys going hard through hits. You know, I'd, I'd prefer that over kind of stick checks and, and trying to jump around, guys. Uh, McGrath had a bit of a nightmare on that shift. He, he threw a couple hits. He got knocked down a couple times. Uh, best to change and <laughs> live to fight another day. That's, I think we've all been through that before. And now we got a little bit of a conversation. Again, we have the uh, referee getting the lecture to the two benches now. He had done the individual lectures with individual players throughout the first period. Now he's giving the uh, full group conversation. See, I, I, I'm going to have to disagree here. He's trying to take all the fun out of the game. It's just a couple of guys being emotionally invested. They're having fun. Both sides are competing hard. Let the boys play. Let them have a good time with it. I think we're probably going to have the same approach from the players on the benches. Uh, we're viewing things up here. Sure. We're just fine with that physical activity here in this game. If it ramps up a little bit more, we're not going to complain one bit. No. Shot comes through from the point, almost gets an opportunity uh -oh. off the bank, off the backboards. Willis has to squeeze those legs together to make sure that that puck wasn't free. That almost was an opportunity along the goal line. Willis does eventually get that one covered up, keeping the uh, Fredonia Blue Devils from another chance in tight on a scrambly looking play. Lively end wall here at uh, Riverworks. There's some pucks come flying off these walls pretty hot, so goaltenders, defensemen uh, alike are going to have to be really aware. Under 13 minutes to go here in period number two as Fredonia wins a faceoff in the offensive zone. Kernan looking to get something set up immediately. Nice pass to Ventura, good defense though. Niagara making sure Ventura did not have that opportunity to get that shot on goal for his second of the game. Fredonia trying to counter and quickly move back into the offensive zone. Niagara forcing a turnover now. And this is going to be pass turned over is uh, kept in by Ventura there on the far side. Just one player there in the offensive zone for Fredonia, and he manages to create a turnover. Cut puck comes back out into the slot. Ventura sidesteps one defender and gets it right to the net front. Glenn Denning was there, but couldn't quite get control of it to get that secondary shot away. A lot of pressure in front of Joe Willis here in the second period, at least the last couple minutes of it. You can feel the ice starting to tilt in Fredonia's favor. Niagara's going to need to push back here. Kernan taking a shot from just inside the top of the circle. That one didn't miss by much. Number 26 certainly starting to feel it here in the second period. Kernan now stepping in from his point position, but Kiesman makes a good play to get it away from him. Sends it the length of the ice. Now Justin Bull's the first one to it in the far corner. Bull makes a move to spin away from one defender, but can't keep control of the puck. And now Jarrows with the pass up ice to Clendenning. Clendenning drops it for Polito. He's got some room in the slot and rips that shot past the netminder. Adam Polito shoots and scores to make it a 4-2 game. Fredonia now starting to establish a little bit of control here in period number two. It's a great job by Fredonia in transition, using their speed to back off the defender. Nice drop pass to the trailing uh, attacker and a, and a great shot, quick, quick release. Get the defenders to back off just enough to create the space you need, and then Polito had all the room that he could have wanted there to walk in and let that shot go. Certainly made no, no mistake in terms of where it was placed. High on the blocker side, and it's now a 4-2 game for the Blue Devils as their top forward, Adam Polito, gets on the board his ninth of the season. 
talked in some of the broadcasts earlier this season about if he started to really heat up, this Fredonia team could be very dangerous when it came to the postseason. Certainly started to do that the latter part of first semester play. And now he's on the board here in the outdoor game against Niagara as the puck comes to the, the front of the Fredonia goal. Albert covering it up for a whistle as we have 11-15 now to, playing, to play in period number two. Our broadcast this evening brought to you by 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions. Visit 412communications.com to help the to have the 412 team put their 40 plus years of experience to work for you. Chance in front of the net as Niagara has a play right off the draw, almost getting that one to a teammate in front of the net was Tanner Zilka. Just couldn't quite get it to his uh, fellow forward there in front of the net. Good defense by Fredonia, making sure there wasn't a whole lot of room in front of Albert. Back in the other direction is McGrath. He tries to make a move just inside the blue line. Good defense by Gallagher. Two different poke checks to allow his team to start up ice. Then that shot comes in from distance, missing the net there, Tucker Trask. Puck just inside the Fredonia blue line, unable to keep it in there at the point was the defenseman Krautwurst. But it's gonna be Gallagher now looking for an opportunity to start, up, start it up ice again. The lively board seeming to uh, confuse the Niagara players. Seems that they were expecting that. Uh, I'm not sure who that was on the far side, but he was expecting it to be on his backhand. It was well behind him on his forehand. Yeah, it's uh, it's really shooting off there. So, so guys are gonna have to pay attention to their angles and, and make sure that they're uh, you know sure with their first touches here. Shot missing the net wide, and now this is going to be Kalpin starting it up ice for the Blue Devils. Banks a pass off the boards, but Esposito intercepting that, allowing the Purple Eagles to establish possession here in the neutral zone. Loose puck poked across the blue line into the offensive zone by McMahon. Unable to settle it down to get a shot away, though, and it comes right back through the neutral zone, as that does seem to be a continuing theme in second period play. A lot of it going back and forth between the two blue lines. I mean, th for the first 10 minutes here of the second period, I think Niagara needs a little bit of a spark. They've been, for me, a little bit flat. Second to puck races, guys aren't moving their feet, kind of watching some guys play, and, and Fredonia's come out flying, and that's evident by the, the two goals they've had so far. A little bit more than halfway through the proceedings here from Riverworks in downtown Buffalo. We certainly appreciate everyone joining us on the Nickel City Hockey Network this evening. Whether you're watching from Georgia or Dallas or wherever you are across the world, thank you so much for making us a part of your evening. 9.35 to go here in period number two as Niagara looks to start the breakout. Puck is settled down on the far side, but a good play by Williams to at least disrupt the breakout. And then a good play at the blue line by Schlifke to keep it in. Schlifke now has to retreat in the neutral zone. Regroup play as the Blue Devils get it right back into the offensive zone. Back behind the net to start the breakout is going to be Krautwurst. Appears that we have another frozen Look clock out. as we have a turnover in front of the net. Clendenning with the chance to let it go. Blocker side above the arm of the netminder. Clendenning makes it 5-2 as the Blue Devils certainly smelling blood in the water now. They are on their toes right now. They've come out real hot here in the, in the second period. A uh, lot of energy, a lot of jump, uh, but that's that's a turnover you need to find a way to avoid if you're Niagara. Cross ice pass, standing flat footed, right on the tape of the Fredonia forward who makes no mistake in putting that away. There are enough talented players on this Fredonia team that doing them favors is just gonna hurt you in the long run. In that case, it was a well intercepted pass by Colton Clendenning. And he finds the lane to take a good hard shot over the arm of the netminder. It's now 5-2 as all three goals here in second period play have come by the way of the Fredonia Blue Devils. What I appreciate about the Clendenning and the uh, Polito goals, no wasted motion in that release. Puck's on their stick, it's in a shooting position. Eyes are up, find their spot, and drill it through the back of the net. Too many times you see guys take four or five extra stick handles and the opportunity's gone. Anytime, if you give the goaltender an opportunity to get himself set, that's that much easier for him. In both of those cases, not enough time for really to uh, really get the positioning and the angles set up perfectly, just making sure they get those shots in through quickly, as Coach Thompson said. Good advice there is uh, we have some coincidental minor penalties being handed out here. Justin Bull heading to the penalty box for Niagara, and on the other side, it is Kyle Giroux for Fredonia. And judging by what I see being signaled on the ice by referees, it's going to be four on four when we get restarted. Key for Niagara here is going to be, can you keep your head? You can see some frustration starting to come through in their body language, a little extra wax, some yapping. Can you get back on the horse and find the next one, right? You're not going to get it all back at once, but can you get the next one and kind of right the ship a little bit here? 
Uh, otherwise, this one could unravel here for them. Yeah, there's still plenty of time yeah. to chip away at a three-goal lead like this one, but uh, if you allow that Fredonia momentum to keep building up here in this game, it's certainly a recipe for disaster for Niagara, and they certainly want to make sure they keep close tabs on this player right here, Nate Kernan, as he skates it in one-on-four. Kernan takes a bump but almost keeps possession. Niagara getting him off that puck as they look to now move it through the middle of the oh, ice. Could be break. a breakaway opportunity as Matt Riddle's behind the defense. Tries to go high blocker side. Great save by Ryan Albert. Riddle has possession of it on the far side yet again. Good poke check to get that puck free as Polito knocks it out to center ice. Gallagher now looking to start the breakout back into the offensive zone. Riddle's got another opportunity. Feeds it through the legs of the defenseman. Can't get it through the goaltender though. Nice individual effort there by number 14, Matt Riddle. Good save by Albert to deny the dangerous forward from the Purple Eagles. A lot of times you talk about timely saves for goaltenders. Uh, Albert comes up with a big one there. They're in control. They've established a bit of a lead here in the second. Give up a break, and that could be a, a momentum swing for him. But he does a great job of being aggressive and shutting the door. It's not necessarily how many saves you make. It's uh, when you make those saves sometimes. And that's uh, exactly, as Brian said, a perfect time in the game for the goaltender to step up and help his team out when they needed him to. Connor Hare carrying it in across the blue line, loses control of it as Gallagher gives him a little bit of a bump. Gallagher now trying to deal with three different Blue Devil players, and this is going to be print up getting an opportunity. Good hard snapshot he let go. It looked like Willis got a little bit of that with either the blocker or the stick. Angles it up into the protective netting. We get a stoppage in play now with 7.19 remaining in the second. Both teams keeping their four individuals out there on the ice for this offensive zone draw for the Blue Devils. Purple Eagles win the faceoff. Gallagher has to move it around the linesman there on the far side, but he does get it up to a teammate. Zilka into the offensive zone here along the near boards. Zilka back to the point to Tyler Gross. Gross feeds it back down to Zilka in the near corner. Zilka now skating it towards the blue line. Cross ice pass to Gallagher. He looks to load up that wrist shot right in on goal. Blocker save made by Albert. Maybe that's a little bit of the uh, difference between some of the Fredonia shots and some of, and, and that Niagara shot there. Albert had enough time to get himself set for that one, whereas maybe the uh, Niagara goaltender didn't have as much of an opportunity on some of those recent opportunities for the Blue Devils. Fredonia's done a nice job of keeping Niagara outside the faceoff dots too. In, in zone, uh, hasn't been enough penetration from Niagara getting inside that, that high danger area. It's a relatively routine save for Albert there. Fredonia getting in a passing lane there and making the breakout a little bit slower for Niagara. Purple Eagles now maybe in a little bit of frustration just sending that one out into the neutral zone, allowing Fredonia to bring it right back in. Puck ends up going up and out of play there on the far side. As now 6-10 remains in second period action. Faceoff will be coming up deep in the Purple Eagles zone. Or along the blue line. Depends on what they decide here. Our broadcast this evening brought to you by Militella Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militella Realty. Puck in the Fredonia zone in the near corner of the Fredonia zone. Blue Devils get it out across the blue line, but it's brought right back in. Riddle being called for an offsides on that play. Faceoff will be right in front of the Fredonia, sorry, in front of the Niagara bench as uh, both teams now look to make some line changes. Oh, we have an intentional offsides being called. Faceoff's coming deep in the Niagara zone. Anyway. I think it's just Kimmins trying to make a name for himself. Fredonia with control of the faceoff. Pass goes through the legs of Ventura. That was almost a really smart looking play from Williams down low. Now he's got to get back to play some defense. Good work there. Created just enough of a uh, a hassle there to force the Niagara player to make a move at the blue line, ends up drawing in a teammate off sides. And so now we have another Niagara off sides call. Let's see if the faceoff will be at the blue line or back in the Niagara zone. Yeah, flip a coin. It's really good back pressure by Williams. Uh, allows your defenseman to stay up and stay aggressive, not give up the offensive blue line. Uh, it's really good work on the back check. Scrambled faceoff. Williams ends up poking it forward. Now looks to get it deep in the offensive zone. Williams pressuring the defenseman Krautwurst, who gets it up the near boards. Fredonia, though, finds control of it. As they look to set up the forecheck, almost getting it right out in front of the net. Carson Miller was set up there in the slot. Justin Bolt takes a hit on the far side, but he gets it up ice. Good play by Kelpin. That was a two-on-one opportunity if he didn't get to that puck first. Ends up leading the rush opportunity as Ventura tried to slide that pass across. 
Good defense keeping that pass from getting over to Clendenic. Back and forth action here as defenders do a good work, doing con continued good work keeping the opponents at bay. Now Ventura with a chance to skate it through the neutral zone. Two on one setting up here for the Blue Devils. Ventura and Clendenning. Ventura takes the shot himself. Good read by Willis. Getting out high on top of the crease to make that blocker save. Under five minutes to go in the second period. As it's going to be Justin Bull getting it up ice and into the offensive zone for Niagara. Knocked off of that puck by Kernan. As Kernan gets it up ice and gets it to Polito. Polito circles the net. Now has all sorts of room on the far side as he gets it across the blue line. Makes a move through his legs. Takes an extra moment to regain control of that, but still has it here in the near corner. Polito taking a hit, facing both different defensemen, then feeds a pass in front just a little bit behind Clendenning. Shot from Kernan doesn't get through. Krautwurst picking it up in the near corner, chipping a pass through the neutral zone. That one almost onto the tape of Obrachta. Just a little bit of a bouncing puck there in the neutral zone that allows Schlifke to find control and send it back in for Fredonia. Under four and a half to go in the second period as a two-on-two -two battle here in the near corner. Puck comes towards the point. Obrachta can't get it out of the zone. Good play by Polito, and now he gloves one down to himself. Couldn't quite get around the defender to get a shot away, though. Yes, it's going to be Tyler Connors settling it down for Niagara. Connors up ice to Sempert. Sempert can't get it to a teammate on the far blue line, but Obrachta finds control just inside the blue line. Shot from just inside that blue line as he can't get it through the screen. Fredonia clearing the zone, but it's going to be Niagara sending it right back in. All sorts of time for Schlifke here. Pass is intercepted. Obrachta being very present here on this shift. He's had the puck on his stick three or four different occasions. In this case, he's uh, creating a little bit of difficulty there for Kernan. Forces the uh, clear attempt that ends up going up and over the glass and out of play. Another stoppage now with 3.35 to go in second period action. Faceoff should be coming up deep in the Fredonia zone. Our broadcast this evening from Riverworks in downtown Buffalo brought to you by the Battaglia Marciano Agency. An independent agent for auto, homeowners, business, and life insurance. The Battaglia Marciano Agency providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. I think we have a timeout being called yeah, here. Timeout by Fredonia. Fredonia takes the timeout as uh, they were the team that was guilty of putting the puck out of play. And I think what you have here is the uh, a group that was on the ice for a little bit of time. So... This is one of those little rule nuances that you see here in the UNYCHL, in AAU college hockey. In these scenarios, whether you have puck out over the glass or an icing play, if you call a timeout, you then have the opportunity to make a change. Yeah, I think it's a chance for them to collect themselves, uh, have an idea of how they want to get out, probably some, some uh, late messaging from the coaching staff here. Uh, you're in control. You're inside four minutes to go in the period. Just... Uh, reiterating some of those messages on making sure we're taking care of our own end, make sure you're hard on pucks to make sure we're out uh, and see the period out here. I wasn't sure if we'd see a uh, change of personnel there from Fredonia, but uh, Kernan's still out there with Schlifke. I believe that was the pair that was yeah, out there I defensively. Think. Clearly they're not affected by any sort of long shift as they gain control of the puck quickly and move it through the neutral zone. Can't quite get it deep though in that first attempt, but they find control just inside the blue line. Kernan just walking it in from there. Kernan now behind the net, tries to get that pass out in front to Jablonski. Good defensive play by the Purple Eagles, making sure that pass didn't connect. Fredonia, though, keeping that play established in the offensive zone. One-time attempt doesn't uh, get through from Reese Taylor, but it's still down below the goal line. Esposito looking to get it out, and he does manage to get it through the neutral zone, but this one's going to go deep into the Fredonia zone. Not far enough for icing, though, as that was waved off pretty early. Purple Eagles find control, but can't get that pass connected upon. And now it's going to be Gallagher regrouping in the neutral zone. Cross ice pass along the blue line. Bull just chips it across the blue line. Bouncing puck in the high slot, almost sitting there. Just not quite long enough for Swakis to be able to find control. Three on one quickly set up in the neutral zone. Bull's going to take the shot himself. Two oh, saves by save. Albert. Makes the left pad save on the first attempt. The rebound opportunity from Riddle makes that second one. And now we have uh, the... Post whistle scrum behind the net. Looked like it was starting to uh, escalate pretty quickly there, but I guess cooler heads prevailing, making sure that, that one didn't really progress into too much of a fracas. See if we see any penalties being called here as a couple referees got in there quickly to make sure that that wasn't too much of an event. That's a great save by Albert. Uh, unfortunately for Niagara, that puck's a little bit tight to be able to try to get it up and over, uh, but an excellent save on the rebound chance. 
2.44 remaining now in the second period and uh, plenty of conversation between the two benches below us. There's just that one little bit of separation between the two sides. So uh, no real surprise that you have players leaning over and uh, sharing their opinions on how the game has been going. You mean college players have something to say? I know I you're shocked. I find that hard to believe. It must be a new development that it, didn't it happen when you played at this it level. It has to be. <laughs> Shot attempt there from the uh, mid slot. That one just barely slides Ooh. wide and it could lead to a break attempt. Ventura accepting that long floating pass. Sidesteps one defender, another one, oh, and then lets wow. the shot go. What a goal from Brady Ventura. He made two or three moves in the offensive zone, eventually got himself enough space to let a shot go, and oh, did he pick a corner on that one. 6-2 Fredonia on a gorgeous individual effort by Brady Ventura. Not only did he pull the string on him once, but he got him a second time and then made no mistake with a good quick release up over the glove side. If you're Niagara, there's got to be contact there, though. There's too many drive-bys with stick checks, uh, allowing uh, some pretty good hands on display there, but you got to go through the man and separate him from the puck. Under two minutes to go in the period. It's a pretty healthy 6-2 lead now in favor of Fredonia. Big second period, it's uh, certainly uh, enough to create that separation. Now there might be a little bit more of an opportunity. Polito sidesteps one defender, gets the shot away. Willis making the save there with the left pad. Fredonia clearly not happy with their four goal lead. They'd like to continue to add to it before this period ends. Yeah. Bouncing puck in the high slot. Niagara just trying to get it out of the zone right now, but that pressure continues now from the, from the Blue Devils. Obrachta finally able to get it to the blue line. It's kept in there by a, for a moment there by Polito. Ends up firing a shot in on goal. Willis gloves that one down and eventually gets the whistle. Didn't quite hear it there in the initial, uh, initial conversation, but uh, eventually the play is blown dead. 126 now to go in the period. Four goal lead here for the Blue Devils. I think what you're starting to see is the team speed for Fredonia is beginning to take over a bit. They, they're faster to, to lose pucks. Their support's been tighter putting pucks into spaces and getting into those foot races that they're going to win. It's leading to more and more offensive zone chances for them. Again, Niagara unable to get the puck out of the zone as it's going to be kept in by McGrath. His shot just missing the net wide. Niagara's going to get another chance to clear the zone yet again. All they do is just feed it into the neutral zone, allowing Fredonia to get that four check set up yet again with a minute to go. Puck comes out towards the slot. Another chance for a gorgeous opportunity. That was Connor McGrath letting the shot go. I'm not sure if it ever got to Willis, but again, that's a player loose in the slot, getting a chance to let a shot go, something that I know the Niagara team is going to want to button down if they're going to have a chance to come back in this one. Another chance for McGrath to get control of that puck in tight with the goaltender. Ends up having to uh, do a little bit of extra work to settle that one down. Can't get a shot away. Now Niagara might get a chance here late in the period. They get it into the offensive zone. They make the pass towards the front of the net. It's loose there for a moment. And uh, two different whacks at it for number 11, Tucker Trask. Pad save is made by Albert. Took a while for the whistle to get blown, and I think that's why we, uh, we have this gathering behind the net. If you're Fredonia, just stay out. Settle down. Like The only chance that Niagara is going to have right now to get back into this is if you put him on the power play by being undisciplined. So you said your piece. You defended your goaltender on the whack separate and, and keep the game at even strength because so far in the, in the second period you've been carrying play. There is a penalty being handed out here. A cross-checking call was signaled there at the scorer's box and I think it's only a Fredonia player going to the box. As you mentioned, Ryan, this is not the time of the game where Fredonia wants to let any of their uh, momentum go. This is just keep the foot on the gas here. Don't give yeah, your opponent any opportunity. You're, you're in complete control right now. I mean, you, you've, you've had four unanswered in the second period. You're carrying play. Everything's going your way. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by taking an unnecessary penalty. So 25 seconds remaining in the period as uh, referee still here at the Fredonia bench, giving the full description of what he saw there along the, uh, behind the Fredonia net. Either way you look at it, depending on, uh, no matter what that description that is given below us here, it's gonna be a power play for the Purple Eagles and a big time in the game for them as they desperately need to at least get something on the board here yeah. in the second period because this period has gone about as badly as it possibly could for the Purple Eagles. Yeah, this is a huge opportunity to, to save face a little bit and, and keep yourself within striking distance going into the third. Purple Eagles get control of it after the face up but can't get their power play set up very well and it sent the length of the ice. Ventura now putting some pressure on here shorthanded. 
player falls down as uh, Ventura now hunts the puck down here along the near wall. Looking to kill off a little bit more time. He ends up getting it to Jablonski who gets an opportunity for a shot. That one getting blocked before it got in on goal and I believe we have the uh, end of the period here. Clock never quite got to zero but the uh, referee's blowing the whistle to call the period to a close. As uh, still gonna have a little bit of power play time in third period play for Niagara but a uh, big dominant second period for Fredonia. All four goals in that period and a ton of momentum to carry into the intermission. Yeah, it's a tough combination for Niagara of, of having to spend too much time in their own zone uh, and poor puck management. You know, a few turnovers leading to goals, uh, not able to sustain any offensive zone time because of, of bad uh, puck decisions. Uh, and then the speed for Fredonia, causing some problems, forcing some of those turnovers and, and some clinical finishing in front when they get their chances, uh, they haven't missed. The Fredonia Blue Devils looking to pick up their ninth win on the season. This would be the first win of the season, though, for the Blue Devils outside of their own division. All eight of their wins this year are within D2 West in the UNYCHL. This is a cross-division game between a West Division team and a Metro Division team, so a chance for the Blue Devils to pick up their ninth win of the season and the first one that isn't a division win as the Blue Devils have already locked up the number one seed in the West Division, looking ahead to playoff action, but uh, still plenty of hockey here left from Riverworks as we have one period remaining. It is a 6-2 score in favor of the Fredonia Blue Devils. We'll step away for about 15 minutes as we continue to bring you live coverage of the Upstate New York Collegiate Hockey League on the Nickel City Hockey Network. I created Buffalo Golf and Social for one reason. To create a space that's different and unique from any other golf facility you've ever been to. It's a place to learn. And it's a place to enjoy. You ready? People ask, what is Buffalo Golf and Social? Buffalo Golf and Social is anything you want it to be. It can be the best instruction. It can be a vibe. It can be a hangout with your friends, running a simulator for four hours, playing your own playlist, and putting a game up on the TV. We are about everything and anything pertaining to golf. And most importantly, we are trying to build a community of players and a community of people who love and are dedicated to the game. Modern media is everyone shouting for attention and no one hearing a thing. Broadcast to social, print to digital, 412 Communications has the solution to get you heard. Want to know more? Visit 412communications.com today.
And welcome back to Riverworks in downtown Buffalo, where we are set to go for third period action between the Fredonia Blue Devils and the Niagara Purple Eagles. It is a 6-2 score after two periods of play. Set to go now for the third. Both teams are back on the ice, ready to go for the final 20 minutes of action here from downtown Buffalo at Riverworks. Hello, I'm Aaron Elprin alongside Brian Thompson from the 412 Communications broadcast booth. 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions. Underway here in the third puck in the Niagara zone as the Purple Eagles look to claw their way back here in this game. All four goals scored in the second period came the way of the Fredonia Blue Devils. And now it's going to be Owen Kiesman getting into the offensive zone as the Purple Eagles look to chip away. That one could have been an icing call, I thought, against Fredonia. It doesn't end up being called. Uh, sorry, that was uh, my bad. I forgot about the uh, carryover penalty from period number two. No penalties up on the board, but it is still a uh, power play continuing here for Niagara. Probably for, it was late in the uh, late in the period, probably about 30 seconds to go in the period, so about a minute and a half to start this period off with the man advantage for the Purple Eagles, but it ends up almost causing a uh, turnover there along the blue line. Ventura looking for another one as he has been very, very noticeable here in this one. He's already got two goals here for the Blue Devils. He almost had a breakaway opportunity there shorthanded. Kernan gets the puck out of the zone for the Blue Devils and then skates it up the near side. Unable to really hunt it down to get an offensive zone opportunity, but he does successfully kill off a little bit more penalty time. And now some good defense just outside of the Blue Devils' blue line. Ends up uh, denying the entry and then almost creates an opportunity for some offense on the other side. Clendenning ends up taking a bump from Goodno before he can get a shot away. Physical activity continuing here, Brian. That hasn't let up one bit here in the third. No, Niagara's going to continue to throw their weight around, trying to uh, beat them up a little bit as they go through. It'd be hard to play against and, and hopefully get themselves back into it. Tanner Zilka with an opportunity there in the backhand. Good shot on goal and another solid save from Ryan Albert. He hasn't really been uh, asked to make too many spectacular saves, but it's the timing of some of the saves that he's made. He made one stop in the second period that we talked about in particular that really came at the exact right time for his team. Yeah, they had everything going their way, and uh, he came up big when he needed to, but Fredonia overall has been done a really nice job of kind of keeping everything to the outside, eliminating a lot of the danger chances, and uh, he's made the saves he's needed to. We're going to have a uh, delayed penalty coming up here against Niagara as well as the Fredonia goaltender heads to the bench to get the extra attacker out. Eventually, Niagara gets the touch on the puck, and we have the cross-checking call signaled from the referee on the far side. So a chance to extend the lead here for Fredonia, and uh, certainly the last thing that I'm sure the Purple Eagles want to be doing here in this situation, making it uh, that much easier for Fredonia as they've already dug themselves a bit of a hole here. Yeah, the, uh, the discipline has been lacking a little bit for Niagara, and uh, it's really kind of put them behind the eight ball today. Fredonia now opportunity to go to work on the power play. As you're going to see the uh, two most notable power play figures for this team out there again. Jarrows on for the faceoff. He's got a bunch of power play goals, and now it's Kernan at the point. He's the one that sets up a lot of those goals. Kernan shot that, in that case, missing the net high and wide. The bank off the back glass ends up coming to a teammate. Now Polito has it behind the net, looking for a wraparound attempt. Ends up just feeding it back to the point to Kernan. Good one-on-one -on -one battle there. Good no winning that battle to get it up ice. Good no gets a shot away right into the breadbasket of the goaltender. Albert had to make a secondary cover up there to make sure there was no rebound chance for the Purple Eagles. Ends up doing so, and uh, the continued post-whistle discussions aren't going away either. I think they're all just really good friends. They had, seem to have a lot of conversations, just catching up about the family and seeing how they're doing, see how the semester's treating them. It's every whistle. There's Somebody's got something to say. Power play continuing here for the Blue Devils. Colton Clendenning in the neutral zone. Stops and avoids a couple of different defenders. Gets it across ice to Jarose, who gets it deep in the zone. Jarose can't keep control of it there. Good defensive play made by Nolan Krautwurst, and he gets the clear. Killing off a little bit more time on the penalty to the Purple Eagles. Passes a little bit off the mark there, and it's going to give the Perps a chance to kill off a little bit more time on the penalty. Obrachta helps that one deep into the offensive zone. Polito's going to have to go back there for it. Polito winding it up along the near side of his net, tries to sidestep a defender in the neutral zone. Good defensive play by the Niagara player there, creating the loose puck and allowing his team to send it in to kill off more time on this penalty kill. Puck is fed up the far boards. That one doesn't connect, and now it's going to be an opportunity for Niagara to get control yet again. Gallagher with the clear, gets a little bit of help as the uh, Fredonia player mishandles it there on the far side. 
And now the Blue Devils regrouping in the neutral zone. Back in across the blue line. Kernan behind Ooh. the net. Goes awkwardly to the ice as uh, him and Gallagher got tied up. Both players getting back to the ice. That's good to see. Printup takes a shoulder there in the high slot. And now it's going to be Kiesman looking to skate it up ice. Kiesman had a little bit of a lane there, just enough to get a shot away. Pad save is made by Albert. Then Kiesman throws a little bit of a push to his uh, fellow defender there on his way back into his defensive position. Battle along the near boards as it finally comes free and could be a chance in front of the net. Backhand shot through the legs of the goaltender. Dominic Gooden now gets on the board here. It's now a 6-3 hockey game. Don't count out the Purple Eagles just yet. They've gotten their third and they're not even three minutes into the period. It's a really good effort by Good now. Uh, taking a puck strong out of the corner, going right to the front of the net. Makes a really nice backhand play in between the pads. A 6-3 game, so a little bit more interest here to this third period. It looked like it was gonna be a uh, cakewalk here to the uh, finish line for the Fredonia Blue Devils, but maybe just that little bit of comfort that they had from the four goal lead was enough to help out Niagara and allow them the uh, opportunity in the offensive zone. Plenty of room to get that puck to the net front and Dominic Goodnow making a really good finish to make it a 6-3 game. We'll see if Fredoni can build, or uh, Niagara rather, can build on that some momentum. Here we go, here's a chance. Justin Bolin alone gets the first shot through. Save is made by Albert as Bull was in behind the defense. There was a second opportunity too. I think the net came off though before that one could get in on goal. And we're going to have a penalty. a penalty called in the aftermath as well. Penalties coming up against Fredonia. Yeah, delay a game. Delay a game was the call for knocking the net off. Mulville heading to the penalty box, looking for an explanation. He's not going to get it, but it seems the coaching staff might at least get a couple of words there about what happened. But certainly, just like in the first period when Niagara scored to tie things up, they had a ton of life after that goal that, that, that made it a 2-2 game back in the first period. Now that they've cut it to 6-3, they again have some extra life, and they get another opportunity in the aftermath, and now they get to go with the uh, man advantage as well. Can make this real interesting if you can get one on this power play. There's a lot of time left, a lot of hockey to be played. Uh, it definitely could be a, a pretty major momentum swing. Fredonia gets the uh, clear there in the uh, the immediate part of that power play. And then the, I'm not sure what the whistle was blown Willis for. Willis had however. his glove on it. It was a bit of a quick whistle. He, he started to cover and then tried to play the puck, but whistle had already gone. All right, so face off deep in the Niagara zone as we're about 20 seconds into this penalty kill for the uh, side in black. Oh, moving breakout. Eventually, it's going to be Kiesman winding it up around the far side of the net, but he falls and turns the puck over. Almost a chance for Ventura to get his third. Eventually, this is going to be settled down and a chance to skate it up the far side, but the uh, aggressive forecheck by the uh, Blue Devils creating at least that much more difficulty in just getting out of the zone for the for the Purple Eagles. Now they turn the puck over at the blue line again. Fortunate that they have to, don't have to go all the way deep in their own zone to move it up ice. That's better from Fredonia. They they skate better collectively as a team, and I think that was causing Niagara a lot of problems in the first and second. And they've come out a little bit flat here in the third, but this could uh, could help get them a little bit of energy back in their group. Puck right below our broadcast position as Niagara still looking to try to take advantage of this power play. So far, though, it's been the penalty killers doing a better job in this uh -oh. instance. Here's uh -oh. a chance in front. There was a rebound there for a tantalizing moment for Justin Bull, but the quick left hand of Ryan Elbert covers that one up before Bull can get his second of the game. Stays a 6-3 hockey game, but uh, just when I was starting to say that the power play didn't have a whole lot going on, bang, bang, there's an opportunity in front. If things aren't going your way in the power play, it starts with retrievals and having that shooter's mentality. If any chance we get, we're gonna put it towards the front of the net with traffic and, and hope to find those types of bounces and second chances to, to get a rebound goal. Conversation at the scorer's box, maybe to uh, determine just how much time is remaining on the penalty. Power play, though, continuing for the Purple Eagles. Swakus on for this faceoff, but it is going to be Elias Printup winning it for the Blue Devils. Fredonia gets the clear out to center ice. This is going to be Gallagher looking to set up the regroup. 
Quick one-touch pass and into the offensive zone. Shot coming there from the far side. That one doesn't get through from McMahon. Eventually, though, it does get to the goaltender. And again, Albert is asked to uh, make a stop and cover it up with a crowd around him. This time he ends up uh, on all fours, face first on the ice, but he's got the puck under his glove, and that was the only important thing from his teammates' perspective there. That's another big-time save by Albert. He's made a couple of those off some scramble plays, and, you know, if you're if you're the defensively for Fredonia, we got to do a better job of identifying guys going to the net and staying on the right side of the puck. Guys are too easy to the front of the net. That's where a lot of the chances for Niagara have come from, some of those plays Look in out. those danger areas. Print up almost with a chance to take that one up ice as the uh, errant pass oh, no. gets right on his stick, and now he has a chance to finish. A what a save. save as Joe Willis stays with him on the move, makes the left pad save. That could have been the uh, the dagger there for Fredonia, but Willis makes sure his team stays in it. Talked about timely save by Albert in the second. That's a big one from Willis here in the third. You're pushing, you give up a, a break, shuts the door and keeps your group in it. Fredonia back to full strength as Eli Mulville out of the penalty box, now helping his team move it up ice. Whistle blown though as uh, players come together in front of the Niagara bench. I think we have Albert's out of his net as he was skating yeah, towards the bench. Slash. I'm guessing it's another penalty coming up here against Niagara. The player without a stick, I think, is the one who's going to be uh, called on this one. There's a broken stick in the Niagara zone, and I'm pretty sure it belongs to Tanner Zilka, who's now heading to the penalty box to serve, too. Bit of a smoking gun there, I think. Yeah, tough to deny it when your stick is in two pieces in the uh, defensive zone. So it's going to be Fredonia now going to work on the power play. And uh, just when you started to think that Niagara might be uh, working their way back into this one, they hurt themselves again with a penalty. Yeah, it's uh, it's been the, the story of the game here today a little bit for the, the lack of discipline from Niagara. So hopefully they can, can bear down and get a kill and uh, get back to work. It's still a three-goal game there. If they can get this kill, that will be uh, – Paramount if they're going to come back in this game. Obviously not necessary, but certainly is going to be helpful if they can kill off this two-minute minor. Fredonia now setting it up on the power play. Schlifke on the far side gets it to Jaros. Jaros feeds it down low to Polito, who's now looking for an option. Clendenning and Polito play catch behind the goaltender. Polito just seeing some soft pressure from the penalty killers as the uh, Fredonia power play continues to work it around the perimeter. That attempt to get that puck towards the front of the net. Good defensive play by Tyler Gross denying that lane. Polito keeps possession as he gets it back to the point. That one looked like it got into the neutral zone. Niagara players expecting the offsides call. It doesn't happen. Puck comes off the backboards right to Jarose and he has a great opportunity from the doorstep. Good save on the backhand shot from Willis as uh, Jarose continues to make friends in front of the Niagara net. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ice, this is Nate Kernan carrying it up the far side. Kernan sidesteps oh, two defenders, takes careful. a little bit of leg on leg hit there. Neither referee calling that one though, despite Kernan looking for the penalty. It's surprising, seemed to leave that leg leaving out there a little bit. Power play continues now for Fredonia, but they have a difficult time getting it out of the zone there on that rush attempt. Puck here in the near corner as Niagara with control of it there, killing off a little bit more time. Gallagher makes sure it gets sent back down into the Fredonia zone as the penalized player, Tanner Zilka, standing up in the penalty box, getting ready to come back to the ice. Meanwhile, it's going to be Kernan dropping a pass back for Bergrath. Can't handle that one as the uh, clearing attempt doesn't get through. Gallagher going to make a second attempt. This one does get up into the neutral zone, but only that far as it's going to be print up finding possession for Fredonia. Back into the Fredonia zone. Good now trying to find a pass in front of the net. Good defense clogging the lanes. And now it's going to be Fredonia back into the offensive zone as the Niagara penalty expires. Ventura trying to get it deep. Had two different Niagara players on him. Printup sends it to the net front. Angled away by Joe Willis before he can throw the uh, arm into the forechecker there for Fredonia. We've seen him get involved a couple of times in some of the physicality. Certainly been all throughout the Niagara roster, not just the skaters. Ooh, a little bit more of a uh, hit here in the near side as the uh, physical action has uh, been right there from the start of things as two players tied up there on the far side. Eventually that puck comes free, two shots in tight. Albert making two saves, that second one coming on Tucker Trask from point blank range. Whistle is blown and again players pushing and shoving as the whistle is blown. 10.32 remaining in regulation as players separate and head to their benches, but we are going to have another penalty called here, Brian. 
more un undisciplined play. Fredoni seems to kind of be unraveling now. He's getting, he's gonna get the gate for, continues to talk, continues to go after him. Hope he's getting his money's worth because it's gonna be an early shower for him. Eli Mulville had the uh, two minute penalty initially and the pleading of his case on the way to the penalty box clearly crossed the line with the referee and turned into what I guess will be written down on the score sheet as abusive official. It's shocking how yelling and screaming at them never changes their mind. You think after a while, they just say, you know what, you're right, and take the penalty off the board. Niagara's been physical all night long. They've been you know, getting after people physically, being hard to play against. Fredoni can't let it bother them. It's starting to eat at them a little bit. They don't like it. Uh, and if I'm Niagara, I'm gonna put pucks everything I can below the goal line. I'm gonna continue to try to run the guys in black through the back of the rink. All right, Niagara had a chance already on the power play after getting it to 6-3. Unable to succeed with that one, but they get another chance here. As Riddle with a Ooh. chance to take a shot right off the draw. I think that caught a little bit of the shoulder of Albert. Ends up going into the protective netting behind the Fredonia goal, but that's the kind of chance that Niagara has to be looking for here. He's let a couple go today with a really good release. I think if you're Niagara on this power play, you got to try to find and feed 14 a little bit. Niagara winning possession after the faceoff. Now looking to get that power play formation set up, but Fredonia forces a loose puck. And now Clendenning trying to get it deep. Fredonia finally getting it across the blue line. Jaros tries to make a move around one man. Nice play by Gross. Not falling for that one, making sure he got just enough of a bump on the Fredonia player to keep that one from succeeding. Willis covers that one up, and we'll have a faceoff deep in the Niagara zone with 10 and a half to go in regulation. Our broadcast this evening brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. Puck goes sliding through the neutral zone. Almost was a chance for uh, Niagara to get a chance going up ice there with some speed. They do end up getting it deep into the zone, but really can't get it established. Fredonia coming back in the other direction. They might get a chance shorthanded. They is. do. The shot comes in from Clen Denning. The rebound is there for Polito. That's his second of the game. Fredonia now with a 7-3 lead. It's a really good job on the zone entry. Polito going hard to the net, right through the middle of the ice with speed. And now the uh, skate to the bench ends up being intercepted by a Niagara player. And now the referees might have their hands really full here tonight. Yeah, Polito took uh, a little bit of the scenic route to get to his bench to celebrate. A little drive-by by the Niagara bench. And Niagara did not take kindly to that. Understandable. It's been a uh, emotional game. There's been a lot of hitting throughout. Both teams going back at each other after the whistle frequently. So that uh, little bit of extra that was at least viewed by the Niagara bench as taunting ends up getting a response. Players from each side in the penalty box now will have to see what the uh, referees decide in terms of what the manpower is gonna be. Meanwhile, in net for Niagara, we have a change coming up here. New netminder coming into goal, that is Chris Colasano. Number one, Chris Colasano stepping in here now with uh, 10 minutes and change remaining in the third period. Colasano starting, uh, getting one game in so far this year, so only his second bit of action this year. Now a four goal game in favor of Fredonia and the Niagara coaching staff making the change in net. Four on four is how play will continue here as almost a big hit there on the far side. Williams yeah. looking for the knockout punch there. Didn't actually, it didn't seem like he made connection with that hit, but ends up getting called for the elbowing call. He he caught him a bit in the head. You know, obviously it's pretty fortunate to, to not land that one because he, he definitely came up, hands and elbow came up through the head. Uh, fortunate for him and for the Niagara player that he didn't make better contact with that. That could have been a real problem. I said that the referees might have their hands full for the last nine minutes and change, and uh, I think you saw it right there yet again. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how they're going to manage to, to keep this one on the rails, but uh, hopefully guys just continue to play the game and, and not do anything dumb. So in terms of manpower here, they're four, on, four three. on three in favor of Niagara. So some extra room out there is Matt Riddle. Chance to take advantage of some of that room with some skating in the neutral zone, but met there by Ventura before he can get to the blue line. Eventually gets it to the blue line. Good play by the uh, working in tandem there. All three players from Fredonia working as a group to deny that zone entry. 
really enjoyed Ventura's game today, and I mean this is a term of endearment, but he is an absolute rat. He is always at, he's after everybody, he's involved in everything. Uh, had a really strong game though for Fredonia. Kernan almost with a chance there, shorthanded. Good play by Owen Kiesman to keep him from getting the shot away. But still number 26 showing that he's a dangerous player on the ice no matter how many of his teammates are joining him on the ice. Justin Bull down low, makes a couple of moves to get himself free of the defense. Connects on one oh, pass and then look. almost a good redirection opportunity. Riddle there at the back door, just couldn't quite get the stick on it. Back to the point to Tyler Gross. Across to Riddle, he takes a shot from the far dot right into the glove of Ryan Albert. Albert holds on for a whistle. Now 9.36 to go in regulation. Fredonia still with some time to kill off on this penalty, but uh, I think they're starting to get more into a defensive mindset here, making sure that they protect that four-goal lead. Yeah, you, you want to keep the game in front of you, keep everything to the outside, not give up easy chances against. Uh, for <laughs> Niagara on this power play, though, they got to rotate the puck quicker. There's you know, too much individual stick handling, three, four, five touches before they make a play. Rotate the puck, find your shooting lane, get it to the net. Uh, it's going to be volume here for them the rest of the way out. Clendenning harassing the uh, power play unit out there as he creates a loose puck, ends up with a, an opponent's stick in his hands. Now trying to keep that puck, that stick away from him. Clendenning fortunate to avoid maybe an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty there. Either way though, a chance in front of the net. Nice setup, but Zilka unable to really get enough in that redirection to get it on goal. That's a really good chance for Niagara off the rush. You gotta make that one count. Sure that Zilka wants that one back. He'll have another opportunity as Gallagher carries this one across the blue line. Niagara penalty expires. They're back to full strength. Actually, the, the original coincidental minors expiring there. And now Fredonia back to Look full out. strength is maybe an opportunity for a rush. Two on O. Polito takes the shot himself through the five hole into the back of the net. Adam Polito with the hat trick, and it's now 8 3 Blue Devils. Polito's been a real menace today. His speed is causing all kinds of problems for Niagara. Good quick release uh, as a left-hand shot coming back into the middle of the ice, finding that five hole just inside the right pad. Adam Polito making it a five goal game. Eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in regulation and that really has been the hallmark of the Blue Devils here in this game is quick attacks. A lot of those plays where they have an opportunity to put something together they have done so and not wasted any time in doing yeah. so and that's maybe been the difference between the two sides in this game they, one team when the chances are there they pounce on them the other team maybe taking just a little bit of that extra time have to give Fredonia a ton of credit they've been lethal in transition today uh, any kind of break against they're getting high quality chances uh, and doing a really nice job of putting them away bouncing puck in the neutral zone Carson Miller finding it for Fredonia and he gets it up ice to Ventura Ventura just softly dumping it into the far corner as we're under eight minutes to go in regulation. Miller putting some pressure on the defenseman down low. As it's going to be Fredonia again, creating a loose puck here in the near corner. Niagara taking it away with an opportunity to skate it up ice. This is Cam Swakis. Tries to make a move in the middle of the ice. Can't get it into the offensive zone, but gets some help from Esposito. Esposito's shot from distance. That one's handled by the stick of the netminder. Nicely angled up and out of play. Albert, despite giving up three goals here in this game, he's been very solid. Can't necessarily call him one of the main reasons why his team is out in front, but he's done exactly what he needed needed to do when his team needed him to do it. Yeah, I think it's an excellent call. He, he's been there when they've needed him to be. He's made uh, the saves he should make um, and a couple of timely ones to help his team maintain this lead. Puck again leaving the ice surface as uh, 7.32 is what the clock reads at this moment. Our broadcast this evening brought to you by the Battaglio Marciano Agency, an independent agent for auto, homeowners, business, and life insurance. The Battaglio Marciano Agency providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. Contact them at 716-675-5700. It's been a little surprising to see just the lack of traffic from Niagara. They've got a big, strong team. They clearly want to play that kind of grinding, physical style. But in the offensive zone, not nearly enough traffic, not nearly enough net presence to make Albert's life difficult, uh, making a lot of those saves seem pretty routine for him. So if you're Niagara the rest of the way out, you have to get more pucks into his feet, more traffic, looking for sticks and second chances. Here's Speaking a chance for Obroctus. He gets behind the defense. Great save by Albert yet again. This time he ends up having to uh, deal with his own defender slamming into him in the aftermath. 
Albert again doing his part in net, and it remains an 8-3 Fredonia yeah. lead. I'm sure he's thanking his defenseman for wiping him out there. It's the last thing he wants to deal with is friendly fire here, too. He already made the, the tough stop there. He didn't have to deal with the, the defenseman sliding into him in the aftermath. Either way, though, good to see Albert on top of his game here, even though his team has built up a comfortable lead. I think Albert should get credit for a save there since he didn't go all the way in the net. Great play in front of the net by Prince up to get himself free of the one defender. Just can't quite get that shot away as a lot of traffic in front of the Niagara net. Fredonia not satisfied with the lead they built up. They're continuing to push the pace offensively. In the other direction, this is Obrachta getting deep in the offensive zone. Almost caught that long breakaway pass. Now he's looking for a wraparound. He almost gets it past the pad of the goaltender. Two saves made by Albert in tight. Print up with the skate, gets that one deep into the offensive zone. Now he's the first one to it. Plays it to the far corner. And two players meet, in, meet against the glass, trying to come up with possession of it. Niagara does so, getting it out to the neutral zone. The defenseman Nate Kernan sending it right back, though, right back in, though. Six minutes in change remaining in regulation. Carson Miller intercepting a pass along the blue line, but it's going to be moved up ice by Zilka. Zilka tries to sidestep his fellow number 26. Good play by Kernan to make sure that that move didn't come together. Puck kept in at the point. Shot goes wide. And now it's on the far side where Connor Sempert loads up a shot. That one misses the net wide, but Niagara's still going to be able to get possession here on the near side. Niagara keeping that pressure on. Good now over there trying to get that puck free. It eventually does come towards the middle of the ice, but it's going to be Fredonia moving it through the neutral zone. Two different defenders meeting on either side of Reese Taylor forcing a loose puck. And now Niagara gets the puck out of their own end. Zilka can't handle there in the middle of the ice, and uh, Williams ends up setting up his defenseman to start the breakout. Puck comes up the near boards, deflected into the offensive zone. And now it's going to be an opportunity for Fredonia to make a couple of changes. Not sure exactly how much time is remaining right now, as I feel like the clock has said 6-12 for a moment now. It goes to 4-12 in an instant, as uh, there have been... I'm not going to say there's a problem with the clock here, but it doesn't quite move as smoothly as you would like. It's a big fan of moving in clusters. We move five seconds, ten seconds at a time. And it's even a little bit more amusing to watch it as it's trying to count Look down out. the Look out. tenths of a second. Polito looking for his fourth now goes between the legs. Great save by Colisano as uh, Polito looking for the highlight reel capper there on what has already been a great game. Puck comes out towards the front of the net as Polito is trying to set up Clendenning. Eventually, it's going to be Justin Bull skating it through the neutral zone. Bull's got a man all over his back, but he still yep. manages to get the shot away. Drew the penalty, but couldn't get the shot on goal. The hooking call eventually coming, as that's exactly what was needed in order to keep Justin Bull from getting an opportunity there. Living up to his last name a bit. Just a bull going to the front of the net. Strong on his stick. Good job fighting through some stick checks and drawing that power play. Chase Kelpin heading to the penalty box. It's a two-minute hooking call. As another opportunity on the man advantage for Niagara as we have 347 now remaining in regulation. Comfortable 8-3 lead here for the Blue Devils of Fredonia as they'll have to kill off a penalty though here. Faceoff coming in the near circle to the right of Albert. Quickly won by Williams, sent the length of the ice by Schlifke. Niagara has to go back into their own zone to start the breakout again with Gallagher. Gallagher, soft pass up the far boards and he finds a teammate Swakis. Swakis can't keep possession through the neutral zone and it's sent back into the Purple Eagle zone. Gallagher's gonna have to go back again for it. Gallagher just slowly skating out of his zone, eventually makes a pass to the near side. Now Niagara entering the zone. They get it deep in the Fredonia end, but it ends up going up and out of play after Kernan tried a clearing attempt. It ended up being deflected out of play by Swakis. See where this faceoff comes up. I'm not sure anyone's really decided yet. Out, outside outside of the zone, outside. that's what I thought. It's gonna be in the neutral zone along the Fredonia blue line as it was ruled that the Niagara player was the one who deflected that one out of play. Puck is down, Niagara almost with a chance to get a little bit of a push there into the offensive zone. Kernan and Bull now tangling for that loose puck. Actually, it appears yep. that Bull had no interest in the puck. He just yep. wanted to go at the uh, Fredonia captain. He ends up drawing, taking a penalty in the process. And now looking a little bit frustrated as well. Not quite sure what he's upset about. Kernan makes a good play on him. He turns on and cross-checks him. 
He looked like he was trying to get a penalty, <laughs> actually. There's going to be a Fredonia penalty, too, as Clendenning goes to the box. Unsportsmanlike. Just like uh, Clendenning was uh, sharing his opinion of the proceedings there. And so in terms of manpower, nothing changes there with a the player from each side going to the box. Have to have a new skater out from each side to make sure it is a proper five on four. And now we're set to go here. Under three minutes to go in regulation, an 8-3 lead for the Blue Devils. Toledo looking to get the clear. He gets two different Niagara players that take him to the boards and it allows Owen Kiesman to set up possession on the power play. Cross ice pass, Riddle here on the near side. Two different defenders on him. Eventually feeds it down low. Niagara keeping possession. This is good now on the far side. Good now back to the point. Gallagher shot, a little bit of traffic there. Just couldn't quite find the cage with that one. A lot on that wrist shot, but it ends up hitting the back boards. Kerning gets it to Polito. Polito sends that one the length of the ice. As we have two minutes in change now remaining in regulation. Two number sevens go back for that loose puck and it's gonna be Gallagher playing it up to Riddle. Riddle now has some room in the middle of the ice. Riddle into the offensive zone, takes the shot. That one goes off the shoulder of Albert. Polito finds that loose puck. And we've talked about him on the offensive end today with the three goals, but there he is killing off the penalty, doing good work defensively as well. Yeah, good job staying on the right side of the puck, taking, taking away those second chances. Uh, made a couple good plays on that penalty kill, but again, it, Niagara gains the zone. They get a good quality shot on net. Nobody around the front of the net. No one within about 10, 15 feet of the net finding that loose puck, giving themselves a second chance opportunity. See if they can do anything else with the remainder of the power play. Actually, it just came to a close as Kelpin steps out of the penalty box. Puck along the uh, Niagara blue line as Owen Kiesman now skates it up ice. Kiesman winding up that slap shot from just inside the blue line. Albert well out on top of his crease, if not a stride in front of it. Makes the glove save and holds on for a whistle. Now a minute 26 to go in regulation. Fredonia cruising here with a five goal lead. Our broadcast this evening brought to you by Pups Styled by Jesse. One-on-one -on -one grooming services that will have your dog looking forward to its next visit. Voted a best of 716 pet groomer for 2022 and 2023. Pups Styled by Jesse on Main Street in Clarence, just east of Transit Road. Niagara Power Play actually has come to a uh, conclusion here. Five on five play now with the minute and change remaining in regulation. Niagara with possession here in the neutral zone as they go D to D. Kankowitz plays it up the far side. No icing on this play. As is going to be Dominic Zimmer picking it up in the near corner for the Blue Devils. Zimmer tries to play a pass up the near wall and now will have to retreat to a defensive position. As the puck goes to the far corner, Ostasevich sets up his defenseman. Back to the point. That shot from Kankowitz going just wide. Puck to the near boards yet again as Niagara tries to maintain some zone time here. Under 50 seconds remaining in regulation as Hunter Kankowitz plays that one through the neutral zone, just deflected in across the blue line by Connors, but it's gonna be a chance for Fredonia to get possession yet again right in front of their bench. Another little bit of physical contact for good measure before we're done. Connor McGrath taking another hit. I think he's been on the receiving end of just about every Niagara hit here in this game. He's been a marked man today, hasn't he? Shot from the high slot, nice save by Albert as Ostasevich let a good hard snapshot go. Albert ends up covering the puck up there and forcing a whistle. Now 9.3 seconds remaining in regulation. Time enough for probably one last faceoff in the Fredonia zone. Conversation between the uh, two sides hasn't let up one bit. Referee letting everyone know that there's five seconds remaining. Unsure if our, uh, can't, our microphones were able to pick that one up. Faceoff going to come in that far circle of the Niagara offensive zone. And it's going to be Brady Ventura for the Blue Devils squaring off against Goodenow for Niagara. Scrambled faceoff, and that's probably how things will come to a close here. Niagara getting the clear. Referees blowing the whistle to uh, bring things to a conclusion. And it's an 8-3 win for the Fredonia Blue Devils. Fredonia picks up their ninth win of the season, improving their record to 9-5-1. Niagara drops this one, dropping their record to 4, 10, and 3 on the season. But Brian certainly a command performance, I would say, from Fredonia. It was 2-2 after the first period, but uh, they certainly made sure that they were the better team in periods 2 and 3. Yeah, I think Niagara had a little bit of a push in the first and, and battled back to, to keep it even. But over time, I think just the, the speed and quickness 
Uh, and just the tenacity on loose pucks from Fredonia was a little too much to handle and uh, probably a just result based on uh, how the game played out. Fredonia looking ahead to the postseason at this point as uh, they have locked up the number one seed in the West Division of UNY CHL Division Two. They still have a couple more regular season games remaining though. They'll be having a home game tomorrow. They'll face the St. Bonaventure Division II team. That is a 3 p.m. game tomorrow afternoon in Fredonia. The last game of the regular season for the Blue Devils will be next Friday, the 9th of February, and that will be at Brockport, a 7 p.m. start. Meanwhile, for the Purple Eagles, also two, home, two games remaining on their schedule in the regular season. They'll face Penn State Barron College tomorrow night at home, an 8.30 start, and then they'll be at the St. Bonaventure Division II team that is a Saturday 3 p.m. start on February the 10th as the Purple Eagles finish up their schedule with two more regular season games. Fredonia, of course, has the playoffs to look forward to as they will be the number one seed out of the West Division in Division Two for the UNYCHL. Good tune-up game as they uh, get to enjoy a little bit of outdoor hockey here at Riverworks in downtown Buffalo. Always a fun event whenever you get to uh, be a part of an outdoor game. This was uh, certainly an uh, enjoyable one for us on the Nickel City Hockey Network to bring you here tonight. Absolutely. It's a great event. It's it's always fun. It's something different. Kind of takes you back to your days as a kid playing on ponds and, and outdoor buildings, just having a, a good time. And, you know, I thought that the kind of emotion of the game and, and the pace reflected that. And it's, it's always fun to get out here. Certainly some uh, strong offensive performances from some of the players in the black jerseys today, the uh, Fredonia Blue Devils. Two different uh, players with uh, big roles here. Early on, it was Brady Ventura. He had two of the early goals, three goals in the second half of the game by Adam Polito. As uh, we talked about how frequently Fredonia likes to push the offense from the back end. Today, though, it was the forwards that were doing the work. Yeah, I, I think this Fredonia team has a chance to be really dangerous into the postseason. I think they skate well. Uh, there's some structure to it that allows them to force some turnovers. And, uh, and when you have that sort of speed and, and creativity uh, all over the ice, it's going to allow you to, to be able to generate a lot offensively. And, and that's going to be a real problem for, for teams down the stretch. And certainly when you can combine a strong back end with, you know, three, four really solid defensemen that can not only defend in their own zone, skate well, pass it well, create some offense themselves, and then really just a, a group of forwards that has a lot of depth to it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of really solid players there that can all create some offense and can all contribute in the offensive zone. It's a really good combination. It's no surprise that they will be a, one of the higher-ranked teams when it comes to the D2 playoffs. Yeah, I thought you saw contributions up and down the lineup. I mean, uh, we spoke about Ventura and Polito. Uh, a, a number of players brought something today, whether it be just that tenacity around the front of the net, forcing turnovers, playing the body, being physical. Um, that's what you need. You know, this time of year, it's not always going to be your top guys. Uh, you hope that they can carry you, but it's going to be, you know, some of those unsung heroes that you have to be able to bring that, that depth uh, the longer you go into the postseason. And the goaltending to back it up as well. Ryan Albert, right. excellent today. They actually... Two really solid goaltenders on this roster. No matter if you're seeing Ryan Albert or Ethan Hayden, you're going to have to do really good work in order to get your goals against them. Yeah, I thought I thought Albert was really solid today. And obviously, getting eight and run support is, is always helpful as a goaltender. But you know, I thought he made the saves he needed to. He made a couple of timely ones when the game really was still kind of up in the air earlier uh, in the evening. But um, you know, I think when you when you have the timely goaltending in behind and you know the high powered lineup. It's a pretty good recipe for, for success. Should just about wrap things up here from Riverworks in downtown Buffalo. Certainly appreciate you joining our broadcast this evening on the Nickel City Hockey Network. Thanks to camera operator Jeff Jazarowski, color commentator Brian Thompson. My name is Aaron Elpern. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Expect to have another game here on the Nickel City Hockey Network this weekend. Not entirely certain that it's going to come together, so I'm not going to say 100%, but the hope is that we will have live coverage of Niagara County Community College and Buffalo State tomorrow night from Hyde Park in Niagara Falls. That's a 7 p.m. start, so hopefully you can join us again for more live action on the Nickel City Hockey Network. If we don't have it this weekend, we'll certainly be happy to join you again down the stretch as uh, we continue to bring you UNYCHL action as the stretch run towards the playoffs continues. And then we're uh, ready to go for the postseason action. The Division I playoffs at Niagara coming up the last weekend in February. And then live coverage of the Division II and Division Three playoffs the first week in March at the North Buffalo Ice Rink. A lot of good hockey coming up as uh, 
postseason time is not very far away here, Brian, and uh, certainly just ratchets things up even more so. Absolutely. It's the best time of year, postseason hockey. Uh, everything gets amplified. The intensity goes up. The quality of play goes up. Uh, it's, it's a fun time to be a hockey fan, that's for sure. And we certainly look forward to everything coming up down the stretch. That's going to do it now for Riverworks as we put a bow on our broadcast here from downtown Buffalo. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday evening. We'll be talking to you again real shortly on the Nickel City Hockey Network.